Welcome to the Black Lodge Games live stream. We're back. We are so back. <laughs> and uh, happy to have you guys here tonight. Definitely. We, see a lot of people already in there. Yeah, we've already got a ton of comments. We'll see if we can catch up with the <clears> chat <throat> in a minute. Holy shit, we got 44 people watching. That's quite a bit. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the last couple of weeks have been pretty awesome. Uh, we put a lot of work in the last two videos mm -hmm. and more than doubled our subscribers. So if you're new here, welcome, 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 welcome. welcome. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's start getting yeah. to the chat. We are, we are going to talk a little bit about Candela Obscura. We'll go through uh, yeah. some, some Reddit threads uh, that have come <laughs> up about it that are pretty funny. Uh, as well as we might take a look at the core rulebook to show you some... Um, Oh yeah, Axe too. Yeah. Uh, oh no no no. The, oh no. Well, we can talk about Axe too as well because oh, we okay. the, the 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 backer PDFs are out. Yeah but yeah yeah. I was thinking of going through some of the Candela Obscura okay. PDF. <laughs> <laughs> More entertaining. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty good. Um, anyway, cool. So let's check it out here. What do we got? Uh, critical Role and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. <laughs> Big true. True. Seems like they hit their peak. Just like every company before them, get woke, go broke. How much money do you think Candela will cost them? I don't think it's a matter of get woke, go broke in no. this case. I think it's just objectively bad. Because you're getting yeah. even the D&D &D and the critical role shills coming right out the gate. Yeah. Saying this is incomplete. Yeah. This is not good. This isn't what I wanted. Even uh, uh, and they're, and in a rare, a rare moment, they're right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, they had to be because it was. Yeah. I think it was like you had like Bob World Builder a while ago uh -huh. got his like his his shill copies. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he got his, his shill copies and uh, it was just like, doesn't this sound fun? You just roll the gilded dice, yeah. you know? No, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, finally, Indestructo Boy, um, yeah, made his, his video mewling apologetic. Yeah. Uh, he scooped us by like a day, which is so frustrating. <laughs> if I hadn't traveled, <laughs> yeah. we wrote the script. We we were sitting on it for a week and a half before we, we shot it. But uh, but he but I mean he brought up essentially the same things. Not, not essentially, he missed some of uh, the big things that we got. Right, but, right. But uh, the you know it was it's an incomplete rule set, um, and it was really funny to watch him. Yeah. Like submissively yeah, urinate. Yeah, try it. <laughs> <laughs> Dousing himself in lamb's blood before yeah. uh, please, giving us a Please don't hurt me! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, it is here. woke too, but strangely, that's the least of its sins. Yeah. And I, I was, I knew it was going to be Woke. It's going I mean, to be like, that. Like, it's made for woke people. It's Yeah, it's made for you know, millennial consumer yeah. who are progressives. Like, it's yes. that was never in... Dis like, I knew it was right. going to be it that. Was, yeah, never I, for a based audience. I did not think that it was just going to be that bad of a game, though, was the thing. Yeah. Like, it's because it's kind of crazy. They have such a huge audience, and if they put out a good game even if they made this it would have been a like a fucking <clears throat> home run it would have been a home run even if they made it a straight d20 clone right yeah. because or, or that's if, at least a competent uh familiar rule system or a, a or if they just actually did all the rules from blades in the dark right right because blades in the dark is apparently much better <laughs> like, yeah i mean and we were talking about this as well i mean i don't want to go too far off topic but mm -hmm. you know, blades in the dark is it's a it's a it's a narrower focus. You're, mm -hmm. you're doing you're doing heists. heists. You're honing yeah, yeah. in on the heist arc or the heist gimmick from a movie. Yeah. Um, a movie yeah, mainly is the inspiration that's being drawn from. But if you're doing a wider, more sort of amorphous investigation, right? Um, Which can have different themes and different themes. Yeah. I mean, they, what they could have got, there's a game called uh, Gumshoe, which uh -huh. is a, I, I really dislike the Gumshoe well, system. Well, you know why that is. Is because you're just an OSR. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's D &D, true. D&D, yeah. married to the D20 Grognard. Yeah. An OSR Grognard, but also a D20, uh, a, a fifth edition Watsy shill. Right. And all, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got a lot of people saying uh, that we've clearly never heard of uh, powered by the apocalypse or story gaming in yep. general. Amber Diceless. Amber Diceless. Or, um, I mean, what else like, did they say? Just 
uh, Fate Burning Wheel was in there, but that's which was Burning actually an interesting example to bring up because that is a very different. Game. That's a very overburdened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talking. I know that's the thing. It's like you're going to call that like a streamlined like story game. It's the opposite. It's the of opposite. That. It's like it's right. wheel. It's a it's a <laughs> fractal Rube Goldberg <laughs> yeah <laughs> machine. <laughs> um, but for those of you who are new uh, that might not know us, we uh, are absolutely about immersive, character focused role play. Our yes. games produce 100%. very interesting stories. Uh, they're a lot of fun, and what we like is the actual experience of being immersed in the character. You know, right. getting getting in in those in the moment in those moments, those yes. incredible moments that you remember forever. Um, and we kind of hate D and D, so it was, yeah. it was funny to see people <laughs> calling us like D and D shills. The grognards yeah. call us theater kids, which, right. to be fair, I was a theater kid, but the theater <laughs> kids are now calling us grognards. <laughs> so we're we're in some sort of we're not. They think we're they in some sort we're of quant, we're in the quantum superposition of both. Right, right. It is actually a third position, <laughs> um, but we are big fans of the simulationist approach to games. Mm-hmm. Uh, go get woke up broke. Seems like they hit their peak. Uh, critical role. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. I mean, I think definitely, especially after this. Yes. Like this was this was a very poor first first outing for a game. Um, it's it does not make me hopeful for whatever their next dagger thing heart. Dagger yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I wasn't Which, anyway. But I wasn't like anyway, but but I wanted. I want basically the dominance of the 5e or whatever 6e is going to be called. Right. I want that to go away. Whatever they're doing, at least do it well, even if it's not for me. Right. Like, right. do it competently. Right. Because notice, we didn't make, you know, we didn't go after right. Blades in the Dark or anything like that, which no. I'm sure we would not like and make the same criticisms of, but <clears throat> right. uh, it is at least a competent and complete game. This game just completely lacks any... Like, it, it's just so incomplete. Any cohesion. Any cohesion. Right. It doesn't... I mean, it doesn't even have horror in it. There's, there's like, one... No. There was one really cool thing in the core book that I was like, oh, that's an idea. It was and for, it was a it was a premise for a game. Um, okay. And it was not one of their... Um, like, they have a bunch of scenarios at the end. It was not one right. of those things. It was just a little piece of lore. And it was basically... It's like, why is Candela Obscura now a unified organization? That's like, mm. you have contact potentially with other <clears throat> chapters and everything like that. Yeah. And it was because they used to be like totally isolated. And this one light keeper went around with the idea of like right. sharing knowledge and yeah. whatnot. And when they found... They came to this chapter house and everyone was dead. And the only thing yeah. that... Like there was like... You know, some, behind, yeah, yeah, someone like uh, with their arm missing or something. Right. And then the next, the next one was like, there's only a torso there. Right. The next one is like, the head is gone. You know, yep. they're going around and they finally get to the last chapter house. And there's like all the body parts that were stolen have been stitched together into this like yeah. horrifying Frankenstein thing that's like sitting there like, like chanting and like his eyes are glowing. <laughs> yeah. like, it's like spewing out all this like dark prophecy. Yeah, yeah. And so they're like, okay, maybe we should. Uh, That's a great premise. That was for really a cool. Game. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I was like, I can use that. that. I was like, yeah. that is cool. Is the only thing in the book that. <laughs> 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 like everything else was so weak. Yeah. Just like every company before them, get woke, go bro. Oh wait, maybe that I looks we, like we, we hit these. Yeah. yeah, we hit these. Uh. No, I have friends that will die for them. Critical role. If you have fans that will die for you, you can do so much. They can easily convert more. Uh, if they can convert one out of a hundred people, they try. That's still one more. Uh, one out of a hundred would be a huge amount. Uh, yeah, that would be by a the way, huge, that would be a tremendous, massive, success. tremendous success. Yeah. Um, and again, just because just because something has hit its peak, I agree with you. I think critical role has hit its peak, but it's not going to be like a precipitous yeah. drop off. Um, I think they're going to coast along yeah. for a while. And that's going to be coasting along at a very high degree of success. Yes, yes. And and to be honest, they like the success of their show, they do deserve that. Like they've mm, made a very yeah. compelling product for people. It's not yeah. for me. Um Yeah, and it, it's not it's not for me and it's not it's not role playing as such. It's not it's not right. an accurate portrayal of what you're doing. What you're doing at the table. Around the table. 69 viewers. Nice. Nice. Um yeah, completely. But but I'm not gonna ever knock them for securing yeah. the bag, <laughs> you know, and like yeah. and, and getting. They filled a stadium in Britain full That's of people. That's crazy. Yeah, 
It's insane. So congratulations to them on that. But uh, you could have just made a good game. You know. Yeah, that would have been better. That would have been better. Honestly. You would have secured more money. You, you would have kept se- your yeah. legacy going. Exactly. You know. But you've made this black mark, and it, but it's also it's just it's showing the truth, which is that they're probably incompetent at this aspect of it. Oh yeah. Which not everybody's a game designer. Right. That's. And I would argue that the <laughs> the guy that got to do this is not a game designer. Right? Definitely not a game designer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll probably end up taking D and D's numbers since Watsy can see. Uh, can't seem to stop making mistakes, but if their numbers have peaked, then that's about as uh, is about Critical Role's ceiling. Possibly. I don't think I don't, I don't think that's true. Hmm. I don't think. First of all, the people, the target audience for Critical Role, are going to buy both. Yes. Like, whether whether one is, whether they're both good, whether they're both bad, whether one is bad and one is good, um, these people are going to buy both. I think. Uh-huh. Not because they're avid gamers or because uh, they have, like, a stake in the hobby, Mm -hmm. but because they're a consumer customer base. Yeah. Right. And as long as there is still nerd culture and as long as, uh, as long as what, as long as that remains to be the case, I think they're going to buy both. Probably. Probably. I just don't think that people are going to... People will continue to play whatever the official version of D&D is. Yes. I yeah. don't think that they will continue to play Critical Role's games. No, I, th- I think... That'll, that'll be a very short As with Candela Obscura, I, I anticipate... I mean, they've, they've... I don't know how much money they made, but it must be a lot on Candela yeah. Obscura. But no, got, one's going, my, no one's going hey, to be... Hey, uh, no. no one's going to be playing this. Sorry, my um, dog is trying to ruin the stream right now. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Um... And yeah. I think that's going to be the case with Daggerheart as yeah. well. People will buy it. They may play it once, and then it's going to go on the shelf. And this is this is the thing. Even if um, Candela Obscura, with what they were going for, with the the bones of the mechanics that already exist, mm-hmm. is already too much work, I would say, for most casual people. Uh-huh. So even if it... Even if it was, even if Kendall Obscura was complete and competently uh, designed, I still don't think it's it's not dis, uh, displacing like D and D. No, you know, like well, certainly not Candela, because it's not, yeah. and it wouldn't be. The premise it, it is a be, more niche, and yeah, it's it's more meant to compete with like Call of Cthulhu and Vason and um, yeah. What's the other one? I don't remember. Um, Which is. So stupid. Like, I I don't know. It, it's they, it's I mean, they, it's they, such a a bizarre. I don't think they were setting out to compete with them as such, but it's just it. It overlaps. No, it swims in the same water. It's the same genre. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it's it's weird because they they cite all of like they cite Vason as a in uh, as like a big influence and. From what I've heard, Basin is actually pretty good. It's a free league game. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've played and I've looked at so many free league games, and they're they're just, they're not for me. Yeah, the best the best one that I've seen is Coriolis, uh, which is a sci fi game. Um, right. But I don't know. It's it's those games are also terrible. Des- they're not terrible. They're they they don't support anything more than like I would say like fifteen sessions maximum. Yeah, I would say. But again, like that's not not a bad call. Yeah, I, don't I mean, think you're like most of these people aren't going to be playing long campaigns. I either. know. I know. And well, and the, and the other thing we've talked about this before. Like, there's a lot of people who. Like to a certain extent, if your game falls apart after like five sessions. Uh, and it's meant to be a long-term thing, that's a problem. That's a problem. That is a problem. Right. But on the flip side of that, like, I don't think that all campaigns have to be a long-term no. game. And it's like, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes it, it, campaigns should come to an end when it's time when it for makes it to, sense. Yeah, when it makes sense However, for the campaign what, to end. However, what I generally want in a rule set is are rules that can 
uh, sustain yes. long play yeah. if I want to. If I if uh, if there's a, a rule system and a setting that really encourages and supports um, long term play, I can make that shorter. Yeah. When and as I deem appropriate. Yeah. Uh, but I can't always do the opposite when the reverse is true. Right. I completely agree. Um, did we read this one? Yeah, we, we did this. Oh, yeah, I also... Um, uh, this is what I, I was going to say. I don't think that their game is going gonna, is gonna to take anything from D&D. No. Uh, unfortunately. And I would like it to, but it's... I uh, would like it to also. Daggerheart is, is not going but to. But I think, I think WotC is more than capable of destroying their own numbers. You know, yeah. <laughs> slowly but surely. They're yeah. not going anywhere yeah. anytime soon. But uh, they will be less relevant. 128th. Nice to see you. Looks like we got some new people in here. Welcome. Uh, it's the boys. You're oh, goddamn yeah. right, Nathaniel Alvarez. Base brigade assembled. You're right. <laughs> How's it going? It's happening. We got someone saying, uh, ahem, fuck critical role and fuck story gaming. Uh, nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, uh, I... Since I had been out of the hobby for maybe four years or so, maybe a little bit longer than that, five? I can't uh -huh. remember. can't remember exactly, but, you know, it was like 2018, 2019 was probably the last time yeah. I had really been into it before we started this up again. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know how bad it had gotten with the story gaming <laughs> thing. <laughs> if you only knew how bad things were. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was in a state of blissful ignorance as to that. <laughs> uh, there's a dearth of good RPG content, content on this site. And all other sites, yeah. too. It's really bad out there, which is partially why we started. Well, it's not partially. It's exactly why we just yeah. started this channel. We were so tired of like the terrible slop and the consumer. Like, yeah. isn't this fun? Doesn't this look like a? Yeah. Doesn't this look fun? Five oh, tips to yeah, to, <laughs> whatever. T ten tips to ruin your game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Five pieces of awful GM advice. Yeah. <laughs> is their book at least good for stage performers? No. No. No, no, not even. It's not good for anything. Like we said in in the video, it fails at um, promoting good role play, yeah. and it fails at creating uh, any interesting, believable, coherent story. Right, and th and this is the thing: is that people, the people who want to play this style of game, it's because they want what they do want, but they don't know, is that they want an immersive, character driven experience because they they want to have scenes where they're having dialogue with people and they're uh you know they're they're having an effect on the world and that gets conflated right with not only the stuff that critical role is doing but they're they're coming at it from the wrong direction you can't you're putting the cart before the horse exactly the way you get that kind of experience is by getting into character like mm -hmm. really pretending to be this person and putting yourself in the mindset of that character. Right. And that, that is the core of what role-playing is. And this is not role-playing. It's trying to give you ways to, to make the end result happen mm -hmm. uh, without doing anything that's required to actually right. make the result happen. <clears throat> and it, it's self-evidently true when you think about it because consider if you were engaged in, in a story game mm -hmm. and okay we have planned out beforehand because we're telling a we're telling a narrative story arc here yeah at this moment there's some climactic moment or there's a heroic sacrifice there's there's some dramatic uh touchstone moment which is right. about to happen we've said that that's happening uh in the session we have done all of the the things all of the events have have occurred in play mm -hmm. um, as we directed beforehand. Right. But if nobody feels like it was good, if nobody feels that right. that emotion of their characters, then it's, it wouldn't work. So again, it's, it's what's the worthless. rubric by which what is yeah. the rubric by which you yourself are determining whether this is a good story moment or not. It's right. whether you have felt something, whether you have been immersed. Right. The, That's the, the core of it. One hundred percent. Not even correct. Coming from a playwright. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you. We we need more theater kids. Crafty Matt, I hey. am here. Bring on this shit show. We <laughs> will, my friend. We will. 
Crafty Matt, you guys, uh, if, if you're new here, go follow Crafty Matt. Yeah. It's just at Crafty Matt on Twitter. He's got very, very good RPG takes, is a very <clears throat> nice guy, and uh, will engage honestly with people, and has, is just an all-around great guy. Uh, and go follow uh, Shauner's YouTube channel. He is very, very funny. Yes. And also is a role-play enjoyer. Yes. Uh, from what I read, it really is a non-game. It it uh, it is. It's it's a non-game. There's barely there's barely any mechanics there, um, and we're not. We're not <laughs> this is so. <laughs> this is why it's so stupid. Is that people think that like the new people think that we are the guys that are like no, I want to you know we have to track our fingernail growth right, and yeah. potassium <laughs> levels. You know, like we <laughs> like, you know and it's not it at all. No. It's not. <laughs> But you do need rules to simulate the genre. Yes. Like you need, you need rules to support the genre of what you're doing, which is why you also need different games for everyone who has accused us of yeah. uh, only liking, only liking D&D, D&D, which is uh, so wrong. Which is so wrong to begin with. You need different rules for different games that do different things. Mm-hmm. But you need enough coverage of the rules. You want them to be simple mechanics so you can, you know, interface with them quickly. They need get to be unobtrusive quickly. during yeah, play. Yeah, unobtrusive during play, but they need to cover the circumstances of yes. the game, you know? And if, and if you don't have them, then you're just, you're making them up yourself. Right. And it's like, why did I pay you? And that's the exactly. biggest, that's the, the biggest fucking thing with this game. Because, again, the setting is not for me. It's not, I'm not interested in it. I have a better game. Uh, that I'll talk about in a bit mm-hmm. here uh, that I'm running at my table right now. Yep. Um, but it's it's if if I'm paying you forty dollars for a book or for a more. game to tell me how do I actually play this and it explicitly tells me in the game make it up. Yeah. Fuck you. Like what you took my money. Yep. This is what I was paying you to do. Mm-hmm. Like it's I'm. I'm very angry. I <laughs> uh, can't stand those HR manuals disguised as yeah. TTRPGs. Man, that's... Yep. We don't want to get stuck in culture war stuff like all the time, but right. it's impossible to avoid with this game. Uh, you, oh, we yeah. didn't address it in the last video, but in talking about the setting, which will be a, an upcoming video soon, um, this it's like the Pepsi Corporation's DEI department wrote an RPG. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Which is actually really funny because if, um, did you see, uh, I saw this Mr. Max was talking about it. There was um, Wendy's made an RPG a couple no. of years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like the art is better than 5e. Like I it's like they get... put like way too much money into this like joke <laughs> product. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> I have to buy this. I, I love Wendy's. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you guys stirred some shit up and now. <laughs> Most of the base crowd referencing your review video of Obscura. Nice. Most of the base crowd, Most, yeah, yeah. Glad to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> A D20 clone for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Has pronouns on the sheet. No GM for me. And no thus go for my, me. Oh, no go. Uh, forever GM. Um, so there is... A section in the book, and maybe we can look at this a little bit later. Uh-huh. But all the characters in the book have pronouns listed. Yeah. Um, and there's one though that doesn't because they are t- talking about like the the political figures in in the city of Newfair, uh-huh. and it's like this is like the governor, he him gives mm-hmm. a description, and then it goes the executioner mm. pronouns unknown. <laughs> ooh, yeah, so ooh, <laughs> no, and they're like nobody knows who this is, <laughs> but then in the next sentence. They use pronouns, pronouns. <laughs> to describe it. <laughs> they say nobody knows who they are. Their identity is. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god! You're breaking, yeah, <laughs> like, you're breaking your yeah. own rules here. <laughs> like this is so <laughs> stupid. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Blades in the Dark is at least a whole system. That's yeah. that's what I'm what I'm hearing. Yeah. Even if it's a system I don't like, and would I would probably apply the same kind of. I like, don't care for Blade, yeah. Blades of the Dark, but it does what it tries to do. Um, well, well enough. It's still a story game, and and but I it have is story game a is, game, but it is a game. Yeah, <laughs> it's complete. It's functional, and it does it does what it sets out to do. Yeah. competently, and it knows what it wants to do. Right, you know. 
It sounds like there are only two requirements for enjoying Candela Obscura Horror RPG. One, love pronouns. <laughs> two, hate horror RPGs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing outside of the one example that I brought up earlier of like something that was like a cool horror inspiration. There's nothing scary about this game. Nothing is scary about it, it, the game, and, and you know, this is hinting at some of what you're going to be talking about in the next video on the setting of Candela right. Obscura. There's no the world, the world. The world has solved all problems while at the same time not solved any, any. It, it, been unable to solve any of it. Right. It's, it makes no sense. It, it, the whole thing is, is hollow and makes no sense. And it's, uh, it's, it's cosplaying as a setting. <laughs> right. Know, like. And it, re it requires you. And this is the case with a lot of modern mm -hmm. attempts at settings. Uh, it just is, it really is, is, uh, prominent here. Yeah. You, <clears throat> you have to like curtail your own object permanence. To, <laughs> to, you, know, you, you have to regress to, to, <laughs> to being an infant. Yeah. You know, so that he, you know, here is a sentence. Here is a, descript, a descriptive um, phrase or sentence about the world. Ooh, that's cool. Next sentence that completely contradicts it. Yeah. You have to you have to not be right. able to tie those things together. Like, ooh, this is interesting. It's like, ooh, piece of candy. Yeah. Ooh, piece of candy. yeah. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> only Keith Woods would have. Yeah. <laughs> Keith Woods is it? James Woods. What is this? James Woods? James, James Woods. Woods. Yeah, not yeah. Keith Woods. Uh, will not buy a book with safety tools or pronouns on character sheets. I did for forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, how's it going, Thraxis? Hey, Thraxis is another good guy. Uh, gave us our, our nicknames, uh, as far as we know. Uh, <laughs> I'm Ginger Fraser, and this is Young Steve, Steve Buscemi, Buscemi because uh, that's what we look like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow chuds, yes. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me to go get my axe to yeah. downloads. Yeah, definitely. Which also, this is how stupid I am. Uh -huh. Is uh, so axe axe two. That's obviously it's Roman numerals. Right. It's also two eyes, which is imperial imprint. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. <laughs> burning wheel is rough to play. That's what I hear. Yeah, I tried running a burning wheel game, a short burning wheel game. It was like it was so brutal. It yeah. was so brutal. Like I was not happy with it. Um, at all, mm -hmm. um, I tried playing in a one shot um, of it, and it's like nothing is happening. Yeah. Nothing is happening. Every like that that game is such a weird conundrum. I, I do want to dive back into it at some point because it's like it's a conundrum I don't understand. Right. But yeah, uh, Burning Wheel is rough, and I have I have uh, I have it, and the. Uh, I don't remember what they're... I have, I have the regular book and I have the blue book that has uh, additional additional rules. More, more, more right. rules. This is also... Things. He'll never release it in PDF, right? Yeah, Luke... Ugh, Luke Crane, I think, is his name. Crafty says, Black Lodge Games, thanks, uh, <laughs> thanks to you guys in the post on the Basic Experts and Associates, my Twitter inbox is completely <laughs> destroyed. You're welcome. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> It works at roleplay and eyeliner. Shauner, <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> I've hated D&D yeah. since 1980. <laughs> we know. Yeah. Shauner's <laughs> big on Traveler. Yeah. Uh, Wandering Mage, remember they still have another game to release. I think it was called Daggerheart. I yeah. wonder what uh, if that will suck too. I think it will. Yeah, I think it will. Yeah. I think it will. It'll... Well, I was going to say, it'll probably be better than Candela Obscura. It's like, how could it be worse? It, yeah, but, like, yeah. <laughs> right. like, but who knows? Uh, you guys are totally not theater kids. You guys are worse. You are LARP adjacent, which might as well be furry adjacent. <laughs> well, Crafty, I uh, got, got some bad news for you. We're not going to be LARP adjacent for long. <laughs> Later this year, there is a, yeah. an immersive... Uh, Sabat LARP. Sabat LARP. Yeah. happening in, near Austin that we are 100% going to. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be spending a lot of money yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Hating D&D &D is half of the fun of playing it. <laughs> Very true. Nice. Mr. Max, hello, hey. sir. Good to see you. 
Daggerheart being great would be good for the hobby. I agree. This is like the... Well, I don't see... I I want I want good games. I, I do want good games, but... And, and I don't really care who makes them. If they I make care, a good game, it's it's good. But this is the... And I, I guess I do, I do agree with you. My, my, my contention was I want, I want the D&D, the gigantic uh, Watsy D&D, not even Watsy, the D&D blob amorphous fake soft edges Fisher Price fantasy land yeah. to go away. Down the toilet. Um, yeah. And it will. Eventually, it's never going away, but eventually, these things will be uncool again. Right, and I long. For and that I long day. for that day. Oh my gosh! But yes, I do. I want. I want good games. It, yes, it would be good. It would if, be good if it was good. Hello, Pride Meeple Fantasy. Hey, we uh, we watched your talk with Runeslinger. Yeah, excellent, excellent. I listened to your. Uh, uh God, what uh, Eudaimonia? Of, oh yeah, of, so did I. Uh, of immersion. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, very, very correct. Uh, yes. And that's also sort of what we were getting at in this Candela review is like people mm. were saying, you know, you've got, uh, you are just saying that people should only play the way that you play. Every style is valid. Uh, there's different games for different people and blah, 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 blah. Wrong. A hundred percent wrong. Yep. There is a eudaimonia of role playing games. And of this thing, there is something that is the there truth. Is a best form way. Of yeah, there, there is, is an is essence a best and a way. best way to approach yeah. that essence. And and <clears throat> we should always be pointing in the direction of trying to reach that. Yeah. And the story games are going in the wrong direction. Um, right. that was the big point. And you are very correct. Yeah. And hope you talk uh, with Runeslinger more. Uh yeah, me too. Yeah. How come I kept refreshing my sub page and couldn't see the stream? But now it pops up six minutes in. YouTube is dumb. True. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> YouTube can be dumb. Vason would be the game to get instead if you liked those games. I, th I disagree because I have right here. I have Wretched Epoch from the Red Room, which I'm running right now for my table. This is 19th century... France, like late 19th century France, mm -hmm. occult investigation in a city where you have the evil of the beyond seeping through cracks in reality, right. causing nightmares and madness. There's monsters. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff. This is, a, and, and it's also the, the world of Candela Obscura is described as being art deco and art nouveau. There's mm. one, there's only one piece of art in the book <clears throat> that even slightly re resembles art nouveau. This game, its whole aesthetic is Novo Punk. And it it has it is full of famous Art Nouveau paintings because they're all public domain and free. Mm -hmm. um, and so you get the actual vibe of what that is. The atmosphere is way, way better. They don't handhold or, tr or tell you to use safety tools or anything like that. Um, and this is not just like, oh, you know, they're not woke. It's not that. It's that, like, there's there's a a higher level of verisimilitude in here because there's a, there's a chapter that I was using for my, my last session uh, talking about the gangs of Paris at the time. And one of them is uh, it's the Apaches of Paris is what they're known as. And there were a lot of women in this gang and they were not treated very well by the men, obviously, but they, there's a passage in this, uh, in this book talking about this of how you could still, you can play these uh, female characters within the, the Apaches as like gang members and in some ways gang leaders and you can do this in a way that doesn't torture the historical facts right right and it and it prov there's plenty of opportunities to play these these like non-bourgeois portrayals of women accurately within the the time period of the world um it's a this is a re this is one of my favorite settings it's so cool um and it also, you know, you can pair it with an actual game system. <laughs> right. Of which uh, we have right here. The, uh, this is the actual Wretched Core Book. Um, this is the, ah, the yes. game part of it. This is the rule set for all of their settings. Uh, this, Wretched Epoch from the Red Room, is the, the setting, though, that I'm using with it. Um, and 
obviously, since it's the same company, they're perfectly matched to run with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Wretched Epoch is everything that Candela Obscura wishes that it could be. Um, it's it's better in every way, and that's, and that's the other thing is like they like this whole thing of it. It's Art Nouveau and Art Deco, and and all of this. None of that comes through in that book, and it sounds like it's more like like Vason, uh, which is not those things. So it's like this big, just no. confused, muddy mess that is not worth it. So if you're looking for a good alternative to Candela Obscura, get Vason, get you know get Call of Cthulhu, else. get anything else, <laughs> but. Wretched role playing game with yes. the setting Wretched Epoch is perfect. It's what awesome. this game is supposed to be. It's all about occult esoteric societies. Yeah. And the thing is, it has real ones from the real world that right. were active at the time because that was yeah. a time when you had secret societies doing all this crazy shit Absolutely. occultism and, and mesmerism, mesmerism and, and animal magnetism and all. Yeah. And, uh, galvanism and all, yeah. all this, like they're you know they're like pseudoscience, pseudoscience. Yeah, they're, they're shocking and... stuff with electricity yeah. and like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awesome. You know what? Uh, you know what doesn't isn't awesome? Candela Obscura. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one out of one hundred would be a, a success. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Diversity and Dragons says, "Congrats on the success, men. Well earned. Thank you thank so you. much, and thank you so much for shouting, like, us, out, shouting yeah. us out, dude. Much that was really cool. Um, yeah, both times that you shared those videos, and and especially this last time when you put it in, we got more subscribers from that. Uh, a couple of them commented on it, so thank you very, very much. We yeah. really appreciate that. And uh, absolutely, if you're not subscribed to Diversity and Dragons, go check his channel out. Uh, Coast along during Christmas. Thegan says." I think this next year we'll see a decrease in all things as we head into the election. All hobbies will feel it. Interesting to see what comes out of the other side. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know if the hobby, the cadence of the hobby, will be affected. I think if anything, if anything, more of more of what you hate will be amplified during elections. Yeah, so, it's gonna get I wild. Mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping it's gonna be. Fun and hilarious. It, uh, I mean, it's definitely going to be yeah. fun and hilarious. <laughs> Double D's in the house. That is correct. I think they're going to make more money in the cartoon sphere. Oh, That's yeah. That's actually what they know. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely will. <laughs> Saying hello to Crafty. People will always buy coffee table at RPG, art, art, RPG art. books. Well, I got a couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, not yep. wrong. <laughs> if it's good art. If it's good art, yeah. I will buy it. Yeah. Uh, which the D&D... Art and Arcana book oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, uh, it's really, really good. And then we should talk about um, eventually. Uh, I have uh, that old um, Dragonlance, the yeah. old, old maps, and I have the old art from yeah. uh, Dragonlance. It's fucking badass. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. And you've got the the. RuneQuest Guide to Glorantha. RuneQuest Guide to Glorantha. When, yeah. not if, but when we start talking about RuneQuest. Which will which be is soon, also right because us. it's also right behind us right here. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, I cannot wait to play in yeah. your RuneQuest game. Uh, I can't wait to run it, so yeah. we just need to find a few good men. Yeah. We're getting there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no time, do a 1K celebratory stream now that you're <laughs> at 1.5K. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's ho- it's the holidays. Yeah, we're still traveling. I'm traveling oh, now God. again. I don't want to travel uh, again for Christmas, but and yeah, and then I got a little travel in January, and then I'm not going anywhere ever, ever. again, <laughs> ever again. Uh, but yeah, so it's gonna be a little slow. We got most likely this this uh, Sunday or Monday. We got another video coming out. It's yeah. uh, yep. not gonna be Candela Obscura. Uh, this will be Nick's Nick's. Uh, Review yeah. of one of these games back here behind us somewhere. Yep. Um, and I'm pretty pumped about it. Same. I don't enjoy watching live play because it's mostly theater. Mm. I want to see the tactical game. Minis on the table, dice flying. Hmm. I can't say I agree. Yeah. I don't know if I would want to watch that. Yeah, I wouldn't... I... I... I could understand more someone enjoying that because it's it is a tactile experience. Yeah. I'm I'm engaged in the physicality right. of it, um, but it's just not interesting to me to watch that. I can at least just like watching a movie or a TV show. I can at least 
um, attempt to get into the the drama of what's being portrayed, even if it's not role play right. as, as such. Um, so I don't know, but I you know there are some people who do go nuts with a uh, uh, terrain and and whatever, right. and it's it's cool to see that. Um, yeah, it's a different hobby to me. It's the, a, yeah, it's a different hobby. It's like yeah. it's it's more forty k to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, man, I wanted to get into forty k. I wanted a kid to so but, bad, but it was so expensive. So ex- it's so it, it's still yeah. so expensive. Too many streams tonight. <laughs> well, you're in the one that matters, buddy. That's right. And thank you for being here, Cal. Thraxis, I bet that they'd make more from merch <clears throat> in licensing than they do with any of the games that uh, they've published. Certainly. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, they might make more just from the show. Yeah, and they do sponsorships on their show as well, which I think costs ass loads of money. It has to. be. It's it like fifty k or something like that to get to get an ad read on on uh, Critical Role. It's insane. Yeah. Which again, good for them. Yeah, they have secured quite yeah. the bag. I do not. I do not begrudge them the money. Yeah. We are, we are, we will also accept NordVPN as a sponsor, <laughs> right. uh, or anyone else who wants to give us money. Yeah, yeah. Everyone who's like, I'll never sell out. We're like, we will sell out. Yeah, <laughs> give, us, give us the money. <laughs> yeah, you have to finance good, uh, good quality. Right. As long as the quality is maintained. Well, I well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, we we never actually sell out, but we yeah. will shill products. Oh yeah. For sure. Like NordVPN. Yeah, NordVPN. So yeah. NordVPN, hit us up, man. Absolutely. We will absolutely... Athletic Greens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Manscaped. Come Manscaped, on. yeah. Players are not going to stop their 5e games to play Candela no. Obscura. No, of course no. not. Speaking of Candela Obscura, it managed to catch my attention and made me look for other mystery and horror-based games. Nice. Any thoughts on Delta Green? I like Delta Green. Uh-huh. Um, so, I, so let me back up. I absolutely love the premise of Delta Green. I am not incredibly familiar with the mechanics of Delta Green, so I, I I'm not sure. Is it? It's Cthulhu, right? So it's the wor- It's 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 a Cthulhu world. I don't. I honestly don't recall if it's br, if it's the BRP system, okay. which is okay. what um, Call of Cthulhu is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's in many ways, it's it's a complete like. Uh, it's the opposite side of the same coin that Call of Cthulhu is. Call of Cthulhu is typically um, a historical you know, 1900, 1910, 2030 um, occult investigation where you are almost guaranteed to die, go insane. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if, unless you give up at, yeah. at some point and have some sense. Delta Green, it's like SCP. You are a private paramilitary group. And you are conducting black side operations against the mythos. That's, and that's awesome. <laughs> fucking awesome. That's so fucking cool. Like no, like fuck these fishmen yeah. and uh, <laughs> shotguns. <laughs> we have <laughs> we have machine guns. We have yeah. machine guns. We have tactical air uh, uh, tactical tactical missile strikes. We have artillery pieces, mm-hmm. and we have. <laughs> we have the bottomless funding of the global American empire yeah. <laughs> to bring to bear. <laughs> Against the old ones. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, man, for the hey, $10. Thank you. Like the cut of your jib, boys. Thank you so much, man. We really appreciate think, I'm, it. I'm, is it Thane? Like a, a, an archaic version of, of a spelling of Thane? Thagen? I am incredibly I think... low IQ, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah. I could not tell you. Well, either way, thank you, Yeah, sir. thank you, man. Uh, and for anyone else here, uh, if you're giving us super chats, just so you know, we do put every penny back into Goes the channel. Back. You guys uh, got us a teleprompter, so yeah. the last <laughs> video, you know, if you watched our safety tools video, our eyes went, or we were looking kind of below the camera yeah. a little bit, and, that, and now we can look right into it. And that's yep. that's thanks to you guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, everything's going right back into the channel, and more importantly, uh, we are slowly uh, working on our own game products and yeah. it will all go towards funding art uh, for those things. So yes. um, that's where the money goes. We're not just... Yeah, the uh, money is not, it's not wasted. It is appreciated. Right. It's very, very much appreciated. And so thank you so, so much for that $10. Uh, let's see here. Oh man, we are like way behind. Yeah. We may be streaming for a little extra time. Uh, where are we? I think we're right here. Yeah, 
Crafty Matt. The exception is <clears throat> Forbidden Lands. It's a long-term hex crawl game that can last yeah. for years if yeah. possible. You're right. Um, so I... I... Was there a Kickstarter for Forgotten Lands? I don't remember how. I must have Kickstarted it. So I I had Forgotten Lands. Forgotten Lands, it comes in a box set. It's beautiful. Uh, ex- all, the, all the free league products mm-hmm. have excellent production value, excellent layout. Um, and yeah, that is sort of explicitly um, like an older D&D emulation of over, overworld adventure with... Um, uh, dungeon sites, dungeon mm-hmm. scenes, and and what have you, and the actual the world was actually pretty, pretty cool. Although I gave it to Anders' kid uh, wow. uh, before I left, uh, yeah. which is fine because I it was cool to look at, very cool to read. Some of the I don't remember what they called them. The 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 races uh, basically were really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, there were like wolf wolf men and I think goblins. Yeah, and Goblins, like halflings, they were like the same species, but like one in a certain percentage would like breed a goblin. I don't remember what. That's awesome. How it? I, <laughs> I, I'm I'm for, I'm forgetting it, but it was really it was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, MCDM game will definitely take from D and D. Yeah, Pro- probably. Pro- oh, oh, almost certainly. Which, I, is, which is interesting because it sounds like it's three uh, O and four E. It's like yeah, it's like four E and four E. Yeah, like definitely. That's the sense I get. That's the sense I get as well. Which is funny because all of the YouTube influencers <laughs> shit on four E all the time. Yeah. Which I'm sure they've never read it or played it. Yeah. I played one session the day that it like premiered when like the. At like a game shop, yeah, and I fucking hated That's it. That's something else we everyone have to talk else about. hated it, but because yeah, I've never, I never played it. Um, I didn't know anything about it, but before I moved from Virginia, the game yeah. store had <laughs> basically the whole line. I didn't buy the whole line, but <laughs> I got, I bought the the DMG and the players, uh, players the, handbook, the, the players yeah. uh, handbook. It was dirt cheap. Like you know what, I'm gonna buy this. Yeah, I'm gonna read it. At everyone some hates point. it so like, much. The fact that everyone hates it so much means I there must be something good about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there must be something good about it. I have my doubts if Critical Role will actually play Daggerheart for their main cast game. Uh, well, they're not going to be playing a game on that show anyway. They don't do that. They're just doing yeah. a uh, like theater show for you, basically. Right, right. And they roll some dice every once in a while, but it's uh, I doubt they'll be playing it either. <laughs> yeah. Candela Obscura plays like Blades in the Dark. I I would Sorta. I would venture that Blades in the Dark plays better, better. right? Yeah. Because it's at least complete. Yeah, but uh, it definitely is pulling from Blades in the Dark. Yeah, heavily. <laughs> Diversity and Dragons. Yeah, MCDM <laughs> will will take away from D and D in twenty thirty. <laughs> yeah, MCDM is over three million. That's uh, nuts. Just proves there's a big difference in the gaming population. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Colville has cultivated an, a, a large audience for a mm-hmm. long time, and he's made a lot of, of products already. So right, right. There's, I mean, like, I think the game is gonna be lame. It's not gonna be right anything that we would regularly play. But yeah, and it's what's it, 400, 400 pages per per book, and it's two books. Yeah. Right, like, dude. I think the thing is, I think he's, he's going to deliver the product. Like some people, are I like, think this is a scam, do. and it's like it, he's it, yeah. Colville is not a grifter. No, um, I I think his ideas are lame. He's just and, sort of lame. Yeah, <laughs> sort of lame <laughs> and overly gimmicky. Yeah. But um, he he does not strike me as as a grifter. I don't think he's dishonest. No, um, I just will not. I'm just not going to play his game. He's not going to play his game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, story gaming bled into all the RPG actual plays. Horrific. Uh, 100% true. Just because you don't like the state of TTRPGs doesn't make it bad. You play what you like and leave everyone else alone. Wrong. <laughs> that's not That's yeah. not why we made this channel. Right. Our, our motto is no apologies, no, no compromises. compromises. And I mean, like, this, 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 this is the thing. Like... <clears throat> and hello from Twitter. I do recognize you're your, yeah. your interacting with me when you're interacting on, on Twitter. Right. Uh, so you know. <laughs> um, this idea of like live and let live where don't yuck other people is yum. It's like 
if things were better, like I could, yeah. I could understand that. Right. But there is such. First of all, there's there's been of late in the past twenty years, but certainly in the past ten years, um, such a heavy uh, universal push from all places everywhere to like things a certain way, yeah. to play things a certain way. More importantly, don't play X, Y, Z way. Yeah. Um, whether that's woke stuff or it's the encroachment of story of story gaming where you have to establish a predefined narrative, that's more and more and yeah. more the case. And to Shauna's point, not only with actual plays, but in newer editions and newer games, that tendency is bleeding into things. So yeah. uh, it's not it's not virtuous or helpful to sort of sit back and take a view from nowhere. There's no such thing as a view from nowhere. And, and, and it's not true. And also, uh, I'm you know, we're not hating on people uh, for for some disconnected reason just to hate on people. Right. We want the hobby to be better. We want people to have better experiences. Yes. And we are both extremely confident right. that what we're saying is, is correct. Is going to produce a better experience. Yes. And, and not only that, it, it like, we're also not like saying nobody can play this way. Right. Obviously you have you to do it our way. Obviously you can. We're not going to, we're not even going to attempt to stop you. Right. Uh, that's not it. That's not what we're doing. We want, we know though that there are people out there who right. are unsatisfied, yeah. who know that there's something missing or wrong with their game or like they're constantly jumping system to system because they think like this, this game must have what I'm looking for when it's fundamentally like they've got the false like premise of what mm -hmm. the activity is. And <clears throat> we're hoping to f that those people who know something's wrong can find our channel and find put what word, we have to put say. Words yeah, to what put, put words to their to what they intuitively know. Right. And so that's what we're doing. We have we we do think we know how to play the best, uh, and we do learn new things as we go too. Yeah. We're not, you know, we're not Absolutely. like written in stone what we believe, but um, right. I played I I played this the game this I played this game this way when I was twelve years old. Therefore, it's the best. Right. That's wrong. completely the wrong. complete yeah. opposite of what we're Com complete where opposite. we're coming from. Um, but the thing is, it's like we do believe that there are objective answers to things in the world. Right. Because there are. Because there are. There are. There, the, everything has a specific nature. And it's like we were saying, I don't know if you were here earlier, but when we were talking about Primeval Fantasy's latest video about the eudaimonia of, or eudaimonia, I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never known how to pronounce that, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, but the, this kind of Aristotelian idea of, you know, like the, the ultimate nature and status uh, of, of, like the satisfaction of the, of the activity, of, you know, yeah, like what, a the, thing or an activity. Yeah, the the highest good, the thing that you should be aiming to, and like the the truest, the the truest manifestation of its nature that exists. That's a real thing. Aristotle mm -hmm. was right, and RPGs have a ha, have a nature, and yes. there and the experience has a nature, and we want to get as close to finding that true waypoint, that you know that that perfect experience, mm -hmm. and. You can't get there if you think all play styles are valid or that they're right. all they're all okay. Like it's fine if you want to go play a game in a different way. Again, By all, we're yeah. not going to stop you. More, yeah, more power to you. Or, I don't know if I would go that, that far. far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're not going to ever agree to that. To that that there's no standards or that our way is is not the best way. That yes. is simply never ever going to be on the table. Yes. It is an anti-game. It is very true. Yeah. I started my channel for the same reason. Uh, so tired of counterproductive advice. Yeah. Exactly. Counterproductive advice. And Mr. Max gives very good advice, by the way. Excellent advice. Uh, his, his channel is strictly role-playing, and it's really, really good. <clears throat> this is another... another th uh, Max is, is reminding me. It's not only that so much of the advice and the commentary on the hobby is counterproductive. Um... It's the same it's the same conversation. Yeah. That happens again and again and again every couple of years. Uh, this is Ugh. this is also what Live and Let Live, uh, there's no wrong way to play 
it produces this quagmire. It's like saying there's no there's no wrong way to live. There's no wrong way to this live. Is clearly not true. Right. Why learn anything? Right. Why get better at anything? Why why take care of your health? You why know, do like, anything? Yeah. Yeah. Just I, like melt into your couch and Yeah. You I know, just I, that is something that I, I so just viscerally disagree with. Uh, yeah. And like that there's no wrong way to play. It's just about having fun has produced this sort of stagnant right. commentary. And it's why, it's why um, you know, like the hobby really hasn't made any meaningful change. Um, yeah. Um, I, I would venture to say almost ever. Um, like, yeah, new mechanics have come out and, and what have you. Certainly no, <laughs> not much change for the better. Right. Because... <laughs> There's certainly been a lot of mistakes. <laughs> certainly been a lot of mistakes. Uh, might say it's a history uh, defined by mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. So, also check out Mr. Yeah. Max's channel. It's Magnificent awesome. Devil. Yes. It is an anti-game. Welcome, Magnificent Devil. I don't know that I remember your name on our channel, so if you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Uh, I don't like bad art also, says Sean. Hate bad art. Yeah. There's no excuse for bad art. Right. Especially in, in uh, the, the Red Room has proved that also to uh, reference right. uh, Wretched Epic. Yeah. In the world of public domain art and AI art, if you yeah. do not have the money or the resources or the, uh, the talent yourself to make good art, these are tools which are universally available yeah. to everyone. There's no excuse for bad art. And, and AI art is not as good as good human art mm -hmm. but it's better than most bad human yeah. art which there's a lot of bad art in in these games um so it's yeah there's there's no excuse at this point um let's see forgive me for not wanting to take advice from a uh, okay uh beauty is in the eyes of the beholder one man's junk will always be another man's treasure Yes, but there's also a you know an ultimate question as of whether whether the junk that this person values is what they should be valuing, right? Yeah, it it's still junk, even if you find something novel, interesting, or uh, I, I'm not I'm not going to go so far as to say beautiful. I th I think this is a mischaracterization of of. Of our perspective, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's just not it's just not the case. Yeah, it's nice to see dudes who don't fake salivate oh, over anything critical role or Watsy and calls out those weak, soft-bellied influencers. <laughs> so refreshing. Yeah, it is. We are refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your comment, man. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hungry hey. Ewok. Crafty Mad forgot the last craft. Oh, that's right. It's Crafty Minecraft. Oh, oh that's right, 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 right. Oh, damn. We're like way behind. Yeah, damn. All right. Let's see if we can kind of catch up here. Marky X. I don't know why these TTRPGs thinks they're in the position to lecturing others on empathy. I've never seen one actually <laughs> practice what yeah. they preach. Correct. Funny how that works, right? Yeah, I know. I mean, that's... Shocking. That's, you know... <clears throat> whatever your m moral stance is, whether it's on the right, on the left, uh, what whatever it is, if you're if you're obfuscating your lack of vision in a mm -hmm. product uh, by telling people what this game is not, or if you're if if you're trying, you can't you can't. Um, what am I trying to say? You you can't um, describe or evoke something creative uh, creatively mm -hmm. like via negativa you can't you can't you can't paint a picture by telling me this is what this game is not this is what you will not be doing yeah. it's it's just preachy it's jarring it's bad even yeah. if even if your values are good um that's not the way to do it you're yeah. guaranteed to fail and these uh, the <laughs> the reason uh <laughs> that they think they're in that they're in the position is you've, you've described it. They think that they have the moral high ground. Right. They're so 
so convinced. But that's the thing is that the, for them, the moral high ground is like a positional good that's always changing. Yes. It's like, yeah. so they can never, they're never on top for long. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Justin's about to eat some Wendy's chili. I hope you're Hell sitting yeah. down to play the Wendy's RPG as well. Yeah, I gotta look into that. Yeah. I will buy that. I will find it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it. it's I think it's free online. It's it like probably PDF. is, yeah. you know. I remember I played Sneak King on the original uh-huh. Xbox. Uh, you remember that video game, that throwaway video game, the Burger King? No, but out... I, I played, the only one that I remember, it was on Xbox. Yeah. I, I only had PC. Okay. So, I did play Chex Quest, though. Chex Quest. Which was fucking awesome. It was, I, it was, it was a Doom clone. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I used to have the game Yo Noid for the NES, where you yeah. play as the, the Noid <laughs> <laughs> from Domino's. <laughs> and there was also a, there was a 7-Up Spot yeah. video game for the NES, which I think my friend had. <laughs> Watch out for fingers, yeah. <laughs> I don't care for fantasy games that have current day problems for the characters to deal with. Yeah, yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah, current day morality. You yeah. just you're you're just LARPing in the Ren Fair. A hundred viewers. Oh, we got hundred and six viewers. Nice. Dang. Thank you guys. Mm-hmm. I hope there's hundred and six likes on the video. <laughs> 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 and if you're new, uh, yeah, thanks thanks again for joining us. Yeah. This is super fun and like we do this every every Thursday. Every we, Thursday. We've, we've uh, with the holidays probably not. Yeah, holidays but, and there's been some travel, but yeah, but um, uh, generally we do this every Thursday. Generally every Thursday. Um. So join us every week. Yes. Keith Woods uh, is the far more interesting person. Yeah. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is either, but I agree. But you agree. All right. Yep. Torchbearer is rough. Just picked up Hyperborea's Mm. set. Shit is so cash. That's what I've heard. I I really need to get... Uh, Torchbearer is another uh, Luke Crane product. The same guy who did did Burning Wheel. Yeah. Um, And while I've... I've come around. I, I understand more the 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 utility of like, because that's that's the premise. It's torch mm-hmm. You're tracking your tor- your torches. Yeah. Um, I've never played it. Um, I've never looked at it. Um, it's, just, it's it's coming from the same guy who did Burning Wheel. I can only imagine <laughs> it is a brutal endeavor. Yeah. To try and uh, make that happen at the table. Almost at a hundred. Surpassed. <laughs> but thank you. Understand not wanting to get mixed up in the culture war stuff, but there really is not a voice for rationality in the TTRPG space online. There needs to be, when now words like madness are a problem. Uh, right. Well, the thing is, there are some though. You got diversity in dragons. Um, you've got yeah. You've got a couple of others. Uh, there's there's people talking about it. Yeah. Um, Legion of Myth. Legion of Myth talks about it sometimes, but the thing is, it's like we really are just more interested in the games. Um, right. It's unfortunate. It's going to be unavoidable <clears throat> that we talk about the culture war because right. it's... We, this is the world we live in. Yeah, this is the world we live in, and this is probably the most captured hobby. Uh, yes. By this far. Is, it's this like is more than video worse games. Worse than video games, yeah. worse than comic books. Worse than books. comic books. So it's going to be inevitable that we talk about it, but yeah. that's not going to be... It's just not the focus of the channel. Like and We care much more about the ideas of the yeah. games and of role-playing. And ultimately, yeah. that's how anything changes. Um, right. It, it's, it is... A, a perfectly natural reaction uh, to, to want to uh, uh, scream at the top of your lungs about what, what they are doing. Right. But uh, they're not going to stop. Yeah. Um, uh, they're not going to be intimidated by, by your, your shouting. Uh, the only way to win the culture war, if you're concerned about the culture war, is is to think and to create. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And inevitably, your philosophy is going to come out in your work, which is... Yeah. Uh, like, it doesn't have to... Like, you don't obviously want your philosophy to be explicit in, like, the game's... Like, the message right, you know, right, right. of the game or anything like that. But, you know, people who don't want to have games that are totally infested with you know, social ideology mm-hmm. need to make games that don't have that, yeah. you know? And like, cause we used to have that essentially. Right. Um, and again, all you can look back at the sort of the kind of like milieu and political, the political milieu of those games. And it's definitely a different value set than what we have now, but they oh, yeah. weren't literally putting, they weren't telling you, they weren't yeah. telling you how to behave. Yeah. You know, and we will never tell you how to behave. Um, 
except to say when you're probably like go to the gym and take care of your life you know we'll say that yeah we're much well and and, and this is what i'll say about the culture war stuff too is um way less interested in the nitty-gritty details of like what did the sjw's say this week you know it's like i don't care what have they done now or like or like Oh, the you know these these people they uh, they don't like Christians or like it, any of these these right. are all surface level. Yeah, like this is the end state. What we're more interested in talking about is like the higher level ideas, which is like with the safety tools thing. I don't think we said woke. No. Or social. I, we didn't even say that in the video. It and was the t- really and the the perspective. The uh, of of the video was not. Was not, oh my God! Look what the left is or, doing. Or let's argue with them in good faith. No, there, there is no good. There faith. is no good faith argument. Yeah, there's never going to be a good faith argument to have have with yeah. these people. You so. are being lied to. Yeah, you're 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 being tricked. You're being bamboozled yeah, you're into being, into going through mental gymnastics because you are a good person. Don't do that. Right. Here is why. This they're, is what they're it manipulating really means. your good nature. So just right. don't even don't, do not engage. Do not participate or engage. Uh, to clarify, I don't care about the personal politics of a TTRPG creator, correct? Mm-hmm. Uh, but their ideology cannot bleed into the game. If cr- exactly. In right. the form of pronouns, safety tools, ideological BS. Exactly. A hundred percent. Yep. Uh, Candela Obscura. The cultural appropriation stuff is probably the most offensive part of the book for me. It's antithetical to role-playing. Isn't the point to get into the role of someone you're not? Yeah, I know, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing is that... It is, and I, oh God, I hate that I'm even saying this now because it's like, it's like <laughs> the Democrats are the real racists, <laughs> right. you know, like that. <laughs> but, but this, the whole setting is cultural appropriation of Europe. Yeah. Like it, it's literally, yeah. they're, they've hollowed that's what out. Steam, yeah. It's what steampunk is yeah. like Ren Fair Victorianism. They, they've, they've hollowed out Europe, European, yeah. you know, identity of any kind whatsoever. And they're wearing it like a skin suit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's like, it's literally what they accuse other yeah. people of doing and they're yeah. doing it. But again, um, yeah, to your point, it doesn't matter. But again, it doesn't matter. I don't care. the rules care. don't apply. Yeah. The rules don't apply to them, so it's, it's right. not a good faith. It's pointing, not a, pointing that out Pointing that out doesn't it. matter. Yeah. But pointing out that they have taken out anything that would make that setting interesting. Interesting at all. That, uh, that yeah. is a good point, and yes. that, because that makes the game bad to play. Right. Uh, Woot, another Traveler fan here, uh, can play any game in a sci-fi setting. Yeah, we have not checked out Traveler Any yet. Any genre we, we in have, the sci-fi setting. We have too many RPGs at the moment, yeah. and we keep acquiring more. more. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. And so we will get to Traveler someday. We will. Um, but it's going to be a while. It's yeah. definitely going to be a while. Uh, do they want people who are running the game to be handcuffed when it comes to exploring different settings? I don't get what they want people to do. Plays themselves in some locales forever. That's exactly what they want to do. Yeah. That's the, these people always do self-insert characters, right? Both into their settings and into the the game that they're playing. Mm-hmm. And the self-insert is such. It's not only is it completely cringe, but it's also just like, why even do this? Right. The point is to be someone else. Someone else. Yes. Like that. Again, fundamental misunderstandings of what the hobby is and what the game is about. Yeah. I use Mongoose Traveler for any genre. If you guys are going to LARP, I expect hidden cameras in both of your lapels. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best. Oh, God, you guys have gone to the LARP dark side. Well, at least you can get to see all the... <laughs> the big I hope t- so. The big titty goths. Yeah. I mean, that's... That's why so many people got into Vampire in the, in first, the first place. In the first place, exactly. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. And this is the thing. It's like, Nick has said this in, uh, in the past. If you want, like, when people are like, how do we get more women into the hobby? It's like, they already invented that game. It's called Vampire the Masquerade. Yeah. And as Alexander McCreese told us, apparently also Cyberpunk is a great way because you just yeah. tell them you get extra experience if you well, dress, looking, yeah, yeah, if you dress, dress Cyberpunk yeah. and then they inevitably do. show up in sexy Cyberpunk yeah. costume. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we might have gotten another super chat. Oh. Uh, the Broken Blade. Hey. Thank you for the $5, man. We really appreciate it. Just Thank discovered you. you guys. Keep up the good work. You don't got to worry about that. We've got we will. a lot of stuff in the pipeline right now. Tons of stuff. Yeah. And again, thank you so much for the super yeah, chat. Yeah, really appreciate really, it. Really, really appreciate that, man. We love everyone giving their, their hard-earned money to us, but it is never a requirement. Yep. Except that it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, let's see. It All always right. the chat always jumps when we switch tabs on that. I think we're around here. I heard Brandon Sanderson is making a TTRPG. Yeah. I'm curious if it will be a good game and how that will alter the market. That would be very interesting. Yeah, I uh, thought it was already out. I don't know. But uh, I think it's a Mistborn game. Okay. Um, I would be interested in checking it out. I read the first Mistborn book and I just I didn't like it. Um, yeah. Strangely enough, because... Holy shit, the chat I love magic huge. systems, so I should... I should... I'm not sure why Holy I didn't shit. like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to try to make our way through the chat. We yeah. tend to pontificate a little bit too much. <laughs> and I just realized how far behind we are. Yep. Um, so we will 100% read your chat if you super chat us. <laughs> but we apologize if we, if don't, we, get, don't, get if we don't get to the rest of everything else. We're uh, doing our best. We're doing our best here. Um, let me see here. Do you want another uh, another drink? Yes. I do too. Okay. One second. I will be yeah. right back. Keep them entertained. All right. I gotta I gotta move on over here because the yeah. Uh, what we got? I'm wearing advanced squad shirt. I'm wearing an advanced squad leader shirt, but LARPing. Which do you want? Is uh, I'll take that one. Okay. Here you, you you take it. I can't. Uh, okay, you can't. We got a bunch here. of we got a bunch of booms, and we have the camera behind. Yeah, uh, and behind uh, it, so, and we're both old, and our eyesight's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing an advanced squad leader shirt, but LARPing is too nerdy for me. Um, yeah, we've never done the LARP dark side before. Uh, no, I so I but I, I did, do definitely want to do this. Well, this is all. LARP. This is also the the difference. This is a. It is a premium, cultivated experience. It's not, mm -hmm. we're not joining a LARP group. It's an it's an event. Yes. Um, it's a single night. And it is, again, just like with everything we said before, when you put a high barrier to entry, the excellence right. the riff -raff. goes away. So there's a high barrier to entry. It's explicitly there. It's it's called the night in question, and it's about a night in Texas somewhere. Right. Um, about some sabat ex <coughs> exploit um that's fucking awesome yeah i absolutely want to do that i have z i have zero interest in fucking around with nerds and like social uh what would you call it? like oatmeal people yeah you know i i don't i i don't want to do that i don't want to have to suffer through to get a pittance Right. Of, of role play and uh, interact with awkward people. But if yeah. there's a curated experience... Right, it's a Nordic LARP. So it's, it's, an, it's, it's a Nordic LARP. That is absolutely what I want. Right, and there, it's like you don't just like show up and then do whatever. Do whatever, it's like It's yeah. a whole at least day beforehand where they're teaching yeah. you how to do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it's I'm fucking pumped. Yeah. There's, <laughs> and it's like you, really high production value. There's like... Tons of gore. Yeah, if, and if like, no one's if no one's checked it out, there's also it, this is it's, called, by it's the, called the night of. Um, oh, is it? I thought correct? it was called the night in question. The night in question. The night in question. What, don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> but also, if you if you know, no one's seen this, there's the some some cosplay chick on on YouTube uh, like was in, invited uh, several years back mm -hmm. to uh, another one of these um, very cultivated LARP experience uh, experiences. Uh, called the Convention of Thorns, mm -hmm. a vampire LARP. It's about the Convention of Thorns, an event that happened lore event. in yeah. lore event in the world, and it's in a fucking castle. I think it's over yeah. th over the course of three days. It's yeah. fully, you know, food, room, and board is there. Period costumes, yeah. makeup, uh, certain people. You got to pay a fucking lot if you want to fucking be. You know, first of all, you have to fly to Europe. You have to fly to Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's it, but like, <laughs> you know, something like like that. Um, yeah, hundred percent. And yeah, oh yeah. I almost want Daggerheart to be amazing, so it draws the lunatics. The lunatic toxic. So it draws the, the lunatic, lunatic toxic, toxic gatekeeping five E players away from the OSR. The OSR is being hijacked by activists. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I'm surprised. I don't know that that is the. Would you say the OSR is hijacked by activists? I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. I, I know that there are 
progressives I'm, making games, but I... I know that there's, like, um... I'm not plugged into it enough. Like, Goodman Games recently bent the, bent the knee oh, yeah. at, like, PAX Unplugged. Um, that, was, is, that was funny, though. It was fucking hilarious. It was hilarious. really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even, even you, uh, a, a D-plus... Uh, micro celebrity like Bob the World Builder got, got uh, booted. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, we got another super chat. Oh, from the James Gang. So oh, this, DM James. Yeah, VTM LARP was all about big butt goth girls yeah. with daddy issues hey. and a penchant for mouth hugs. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know. See, when people are like, "Man, vampire the masquerade that's gay," it's like. <laughs> No, it's the you most completely heterosexual <laughs> yeah. game ever. <laughs> Nobody got laid from D and D, all right? Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of people got laid a lot from VTM. Vampire. Yep. <laughs> uh. Okay, sorry. We it, it just uh, sorry guys. We got to catch up here because the anytime we switch between goes like the, the super chat the tab, tab, yeah, and like it changes. It doesn't go all the way down. It goes like. It's stupid. ten chats down. Um, heard Brandon Sant. We did that one already. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Baby Steve Buscemi makes me yeah. think of my Iron Kingdom character, Mister Pink. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Iron Kingdom is kind of cool. Okay, like, okay. Like no, 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 no. We gotta address this. Don't worry. It's okay to admit when you're wrong, uh, guys. First of all, we'll never, never ever do that. Wrong. We will never admit we're wrong. And second of all, you are wrong. You are one hundred percent wrong. Things are not all equal. There is right. a, there are definitely better ways to play. There are a lot of wrong ways to play. Believe yeah, me, there there's are a lot. There of are wrong always ways. there are always far more wrong yeah. ways to do a thing, right? Than um, viable than viable ways, mm -hmm. and there's even less good ways, right? Uh, Joe Martin says, "Been working on my Ooh. own RPG for a year and a month." Finally on to testing with friends. Nice. Any suggestions? I have no publishers or anything. Its theme is exploring a new land. Has a 1600s feel. Uh, I mean, yeah, cool. playtest it with your friends. Yeah. But uh, find people to playtest it that are not your friends. And people... Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, honestly, like, if go and find, like, really hardcore OSR people uh, who will... People who will break the game. Break the game yeah. uh, is, a, is a very, very good way to do that. Um, and, I mean, as far as, like, art, start, you know, saving money or and or learning how to, how to use, use AI, AI, AI art, art. tools. Uh, and But also, if you're doing a 1600s thing, look oh, online yes. for public domain art. Public domain art. There's so much stuff out there that will work yeah. for this. And that's, and the, that's really a, good. It's yeah, really that's good. Yeah, that's the high renaissance. Yeah. It's, the, you know, the be some of the best art. Right. Was, It'll be the best art and, and, yeah. and absolutely fit the game. So... That's cool. I, that I, is uh, really cool. <clears throat> um, I haven't really seen. So it's like a fantasy high renaissance new world. Well, it's sixteen hundreds. Yeah. Oh it's yeah, gonna yeah. Be yeah. Like so it's landing new, in America. New world. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've never seen that's pretty cool. That uh, that done to my recollection. There are a lot of like yeah. eras. Like we we're talking about Wretched Epic again. Yeah. Like that's. That's not a period or like a genre. Right, period. I know like, that anyone's really done. I haven't done. seen any like really good. There's been like pirate games, um, but there ha I haven't ever seen a really good like historical uh, Age of High Sail. Yeah, I haven't seen like a Napoleonic. Yeah. Um, RPG, uh, 1600s or you know, New New World. Uh, yeah, doing something like Master and Commander would be amazing. Yeah, that'd it be would. really really cool. I'm sure yeah. someone will inform us in the chat that we're wrong. In those. I'm sure those RPGs I, undoubtedly there are RPGs yeah. out there that do those right. things. But. but but that is something I like historical settings. And yeah. there's a lot of unex there's so much stuff in history. So much. So much stuff. And it's, it's just waiting to be made. Yeah. Um so, so very cool, man. Yeah. Like yeah, go definitely. For it. Yeah. And if you wanna if you have any links about anything, drop it in the chat. Uh everyone is is free to shill their stuff. Yeah, we in want people to Make more stuff, make good and stuff. And make good stuff, yeah. yes. Story games are nothing more than sitting around telling a tale. You don't need to drop $40 <laughs> to tell you how. Yes. I 100% agree. Yep. Wandering Mage, welcome, man. We need video documentation of the Sabat LARP for entertainment slash blackmail. <laughs> and also, i just uh, just curious what those World of Darkness LARPs are like. Don't uh -huh. know yet, but... Don't we'll, know yet either. We'll yeah, we are also findings. curious. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, we will. Uh, you have to click on another YouTube tab like home or watch later, then click back on the subs to get it to refresh sometimes. Uh, we're actually, we're doing StreamYard, so it's uh, not the... The YouTube. Not the YouTube yeah. tab, yeah. That game sounds fucking awesome. Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, there's much more... Oh, wait, I gotta click on it. Uh, there's much more than you can actually take in the mechanics of the game. I don't recall what this is in reference to. This is uh, Ultra American. He's the guy who's been arguing. No, no, I, but he's way. replying to... Yeah. There's much much more than that if you take he's in responding the mechanics to, of the game. To him. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we just got another super chat, though. Hey. Wandering Mage, $5. Thank you very much, man. There's already ah, a Mistborn okay. RPG. The license expired uh, for... Or something, so it goes off the market on the 31st. Oh, I hate that. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. Brandon's new Storm... RPG is for Stormlight Archives. Okay. I know people love that <laughs> series, too. Uh, I mm-hmm. I just, I, I bounce really hard off of uh, off of Mistborn and have never... Yeah. I also disagree. I'm not going to get into it, but I disagree super strongly with his, with his take on magic systems being mm-hmm. overly systematized and, like, scientific and clear. But a topic for another conversation. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts or feelings about Ooh. the game Degenesis? Degenesis is one of the most beautiful uh, RPG products uh, ever put out. I've never even heard of this. You gotta watch. If you've never seen the trailer they put out on YouTube for it, uh-uh. uh, dude, I gotta show that to you today. Okay. Um, I don't remember. I don't. I don't know. It's it's so European, and it feel this this. I don't know if like Scandinavians made this game, yeah. but to me, like if this feels like so fucking tr- German, it's uh, the world is cool as fuck. Yeah. Um, and it's I remember start. I have I have <laughs> the I have the PDFs, um, but I didn't have anybody to play it, and I mm-hmm. have zero recollection uh, about how the rules work. So it's it's a post apocalyptic game. It's in Europe. Um, there's sort of this. I think they're like uh, meteorites or something that have it, it's a it's a fungal zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, basically, but you have these different factions in Europe, um, uh, either languishing as like weird cultists of like the fungus hive mind. Yeah. Uh, but one of the they're like. Um, they're like most evocative like uh, factions. I think they're called the. God, what are they? Are they the, the hospitalers or are they the? Uh, I, they're fucking. I think they're Swiss. So this this faction of like the Swiss Guard or something, or just the Swiss the Swiss government, yeah. like made a bunker in the Alps, and they're one of the uh, like the most um, like still technologically uh, viable uh, uh, cultures. It's is this weird combination of like. Near futurism with like Prussian yeah. aesthetic to the, it's so it's so fucking it's so fucking cool it's hard hard to explain I loved Genesis and I would love to run it I would yeah. love to play in it um uh, I should I should break out those PDFs yeah I was going to buy uh buy the books at Gen Con one year but I was out of money and I mm-hmm. hear that <laughs> I I hear that um. <laughs> If someone right. out there knows, okay. I I thought I thought they went bank, bankrupt or they, uh, uh-huh. they uh, uh, the game is no longer in print. I hope that's not the case. Uh, the Genesis is a okay. great setting, horrible system though. Ah, I okay. am guessing that Shauner uses Traveler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I play Wretched as well, and it's hmm. just as valid. Oh my God, as valid as a game is powered by the apocalypse, and. Uh, 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 what is the F-I-T-B? something in, in the dark? It's uh, I forget. I forget what the F stands for. All right, uh, wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, man, that's what I was worried about. At Shauner, he says, uh, the game is a free download from their site. Okay. Two books. This is for uh, yeah. Mongoose Traveler. Yeah. Oh. Uh, At Shauner, is he, I is he talking about Traveler or is he talking about Degenesis? What? At Shauner, I can't see your messages for some reason. I think that means he blocked you, dude. No. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, everyone I've played left wondering why I even bothered. We didn't need to spend money on it to tell the story. This is this is the conversation they were having. Right, I, okay. I, we, we missed the, the, uh, gonna... the, the genesis of it. 
Uh, Lexicultum 2 if you can't get through the combat system. I've heard of that name, not familiar with it. What's this say? I think that's kind of awesome. But I impulse bought the core books and two of the campaign books for like 50% or more as they were going out of stock. I think this is DeGenesis as well. Yeah. Gorgeous bum, bum, bum. books. I love Rune Quest. Rune Quest. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm getting into it. It's 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 sounding pretty cool. Crossface has been telling me to, to, <laughs> to, to telling us to play it for so long. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to. Um, I am one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like it seems. I'm gonna run it. Awesome. And we're gonna make videos about it as well. Um, yeah. That'll be a little a little more down the line, but uh, yeah, it sounds right up our alley. Right up the alley, and there's I've so been, much so much of the world. Dragon <laughs> Dragon Pass is not the only fucking place in the in the world. I grabbed the Room Sex <laughs> Room Quest starter box. Sweet shit. Welcome to Jay Irwin. <laughs> Critical Role Gandela Obscura. <laughs> we got we got uh, <laughs> Sperto Sparte in the chat here. <laughs> How's it going, man? <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, man. Yeah. <laughs> this Watching is probably like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Watching combat sessions is like watching paint dry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now we've just caught up to the part where we were talking about watching a war game. That was like 30 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> uh, oh, well. You guys should come to the North Texas RPG uh, Game Day in January in Dallas. I thought that Wait. was going to be later in the year. Uh, we that, are going to... I hope it's not in fucking January. I can't do it if it's in January, unfortunately. I thought it was in June. Our intention is to go to North it's Texas RPG Con. It's to North RPG Texas Con. RPG Con, yeah. Hold on. I mean, all right, I'll let you look that up so we're not yeah. both looking up yeah. the exact same information. Yeah. <laughs> Great stream. <laughs> um, you two and the other YouTubers in this chat should form the NWO... Or DX of the YouTube or TTRPG community. Nice. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, the worst part of actual plays is the tactical gameplay. Yeah, well, production. and that's the reason that, that real, actual, actual plays are not very compelling to watch sometimes. Is because the activity fundamentally is not for an audience. It's for the people that are doing it, that are at the table. Um, First Thursday in June. Yeah, okay. So the, it must be another... It must be like a one-day thing. That a one-day thing. Or a, so we will not be there in January, but yeah. we will definitely be... Uh, in June. In June, we'll be going to North Texas Game Con. Um, but yeah, actual plays generally are unwatchable um, because it's not meant for an audience. Uh, right. Which should also cue you in as to what Critical Role is and is not doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the point of this sphere is to move away from wargaming and its vestiges. Uh, yeah, sort of. I mean, there's. I think the it point, depends on what you're do, on what what you're doing. The point of the, if by sphere, if we're talking about like, the hobby as such, I, th I think he's talking more about our kind of uh, circle of of oh okay the immersive gaming <clears throat> third I mean, third I, positionists. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I wouldn't say it's strictly about moving away from war ga war gaming and only war gaming. I would say it's. Again, unapolog uh, unapologetically saying that RPGs now they they were very much in, in the seventies, the, er you know, the early eighties, a part of uh, had their their uh, one foot firmly in the wargaming tradition. RPGs are their own thing now. They have evolved into something, and what they do is character immersion. That is what they're right. for, and that is what. That is what you should be striving to do. Yeah. If you want to be getting the most out of your play experience. And, and again, that, that depends on genre as well, though. Because, like, in Axe, we will be doing the immersive roleplay thing. However, wargaming is a component of that. Because it's, it's a part of the genre and a right. part of the game to, like, have epic pitched battles and, and all that stuff. And I think you need... You definitely you need, but even more even even for that. even an even an axe, surely what anchors it is the immersive experience, and yes. by anchoring yourself 
in that immersive experience the of the character, right. we can extrapolate out, okay, because I am the king now, yeah. these are things that the king would do, Helm's Deep, what, you know, what have right. you, um, you know, the Battle of Agincourt, what, you know, whatever, the, I mean, that's you know, further on historically, but you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, 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 We're yeah, doing yeah. campaign play right. because my character naturally would do so because right. of because of the actions. And because events. of gold for XP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Justin Thor, I think this Sunday we'll talk, what is a role-playing? I think you meant to say, what is a role-playing game? Yeah. Although, what is a role-playing... Is you a might, better you might title. Act, you, yeah. might, yeah, you might actually be able to uh, converse with the, with the slop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> For 40k, I couldn't get into 40k either, but found Kill Team really easy to get into. It's a squad-based game without a crazy high price of entry. Cool. That's cool. When I, when I was in... Eighth grade, I think my friends, uh, my friend Danny and I were super into Axis and Allies. Like we played it mm. so so much, and we were crazy crazy interested in World War II and watched Saving Private Ryan like eight million times. Yeah. But we also watched a, a shitload of old World War II movies um, and wanted to recreate that. So we got our two individual boards of Axis and Allies and busted those tr- troops out and used them as minis to do yeah. a tactical. Uh, war game that we were making um which was a shitload of fun and that was in lieu of warhammer because we couldn't <laughs> afford it <laughs> uh dnd is a containment zone for the worst people in the hobby if it dies the fetid monkeys who play <laughs> will leak into the other better games and drag them down to their level well, I, don't I don't think th- that i don't think so no i think i think it just goes away it if, goes if away if that happens they just stop being fans of it yeah, they've only they've only infected that part of the hobby because that part of the hobby has such a low barrier to entry and is so like <laughs> the immune system is so weak. Right. Uh, to that, uh, these people aren't going to get um, super invested in niche products. Mm-hmm. Uh, a because they don't have the intelligence, uh, the interest, um, and uh, in doing so, and because there's no cloud in it. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's no there's no clout in doing so. Yeah. Delta Green is my favorite game. It's the best version of BRP. Okay, so, so it, is, it, is it is BRP. Well, I love the BRP yeah. system. It's a D100. Cool. Nice. Okay. Damn, we are behind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can skip ahead a bit. Maybe find something else that's a little interesting that we can. Um... I found my time running Blades as a lifelong AD and D guy revealed. That it's the least story game story game ever designed. You can operate almost entirely in a gamist mindset, almost a war game at times. Interesting. Okay. That is very interesting. Cool. I've again, I've never played it. I'm I'm familiar with it and uh, some of the rudiments of the of the system, uh, but not the nitty gritty. Is it bead or bede? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna say, say bead. bead. Like a. Um. It's like an archaic name. Yeah. Bead. Again, I'm very low IQ. So, uh, Anyway, he follows up with, uh, I find all the Powered by the Apocalypse stuff, on the other hand, completely intolerable to Hand Wavy. Agree. Yeah. And, th- and that's the other thing. Uh, in the comments on the video, we did get a lot of people saying um, that we've never tried these games. Right. Which I've never tried a, a Powered by the Apocalypse game myself. Um, but I have tried Diceless games. I've yeah. tried all sorts of shit. Yeah. Uh, so I do... We I know do what have, we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we know what we're talking about. And you don't is the, the important thing. <laughs> oh, wait. Did we get another one? I think we did. Oh. Joe Martin for $5. Thank hey, you, man. thank you. Uh, I don't have links up. It's still an alpha. This okay. is the game he was talking about, the yeah. 1600s. Oh, you, 2D8. Uh, what? Thank you, guys. It's a 2D8 system. No Fuck, class yeah. system. Races are elf, orc, etc. Nation, background makes a character. Oh, well, it's going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. You you have said the magic words. Or 2D8. We, yeah, we love 2D8. 2D8. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know if you want to make it crazy, make the two make the eights explode. Eights explode. And then it'll be our favorite system. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, keep uh, us updated. Yeah, keep us updated. If, if you Tell don't, us uh, more. Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you do you like obviously you have an account cuz yeah. you're commenting here. <laughs> Uh, but let us know um, if you uh, yeah, actually keep, make videos or stuff. Keep us like, posted. We will. Posted. We will talk about it. Uh, yeah. You know, this is very more, interesting. More people making making quality shit. Awesome. All right. 
Bum, 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 bum. We're back to talking about Matt Colville, it looks like. Crafty says, I was a big supporter of Matt Colville, despite what everyone else thought of him. I had concerns about his game, posted them to X. I saw that exchange. And got blocked for my yep. effort. Colville is dead to me. Yeah, yeah I, he would be dead to it me. Was a, yeah, it was a very weak move Yeah. Um, on his part. Uh, you were not out of line at all. Yeah. Um, even if you were out of line, it would be a weak move. It would be a weak move. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, what do you guys think of Colville's RPG advice? We've watched some of his videos and so like he's he's so times... he's so prolific um i just i disagree with the the perspective he's coming from yeah like, i think or like, like the emphasis he's putting on things there was at least one video that he did where we, we were oh, like oh god yeah we were well no, no no there was one where we were like wow he's actually right yeah um and then there was, was another one we watched where, like, this is terrible advice. Like, uh, yeah. well, it kind of just depends. Well, we agree with wasn't advice. He was. It wasn't he was advice. He was yeah. mentioning that D and D yeah. is, 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 is is an anti genre. Is it not? Is about nothing. It's about is about yeah. nothing, which is true. Which is true. But I I would say uh, I, I would I would disagree uh, by and large with his uh, his advice because mm -hmm. his advice comes from uh, a sort of heavy reliance on procedure mechanics. And like yeah. materials, battle mats, minis, those sorts of things. Right. And you don't need those, uh, and they are just eroding your imagination. Right, exactly. If you play, like, and a lot of people play with minis, that's fine for you at your table, not at ours. Yeah. Uh, but the, and the reason <laughs> being that uh, uh, RPG is dumb, put it best. If you play with minis, you're going to remember the minis. Right, right. And I don't want to remember the minis, I want to remember what's happening up here because exactly. my imagination is awesome. And I don't want that to get distracted by the minis. Absolutely. Um, the fact that MCDM is over $3 million just proves that it's more about the face than the products. The products will suck. Many will be disappointed. Yeah. That's, I mean, so that is true. Um, most mm -hmm. people know Matt Colville. I mean, it's the same thing with Critical Role at this point. People don't know shit about, uh, or Candela Obscure. People don't know anything about Occult Investigation. Yeah. But they know who Critical Role is. Yeah. Um, However, I would also I would also say that um, Matt Colville is speaking to I think an underserved part of the marketplace, which is explicitly gamist, yeah, modern, right. you know, sort of modern D and D, uh, crunchy options, feats, right, uh, more video people who know, like, want an actual tactical experience, tacti tactical yeah. experience. So it is that, but um, I think he's also he's also hitting on something. He's also serving. Yeah. Um, uh, a legitimate market niche. Right. I just think it's It's bad. just, yeah, it's bad not for us is the yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, his early advice is good. His advice after he hit it big with his first book, uh, that's when his advice turned to crap. Uh, would not surprise me. Yeah. Many such cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it'll be bought, played a bit, and then sit on the shelf. The target audience for the products are D&D &D players they will go back to their OG game. Colville got a huge uh, head and forgot and, Literally and, and neck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And forgot where he came from. He even forgets that he used to play. We used to play in the same circles as I can throw a stone and hit Matt's house. Ah. Is that a threat? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's not. Uh, yeah, I get that. The one thing I didn't like is when he suggested that the DM is in the wrong if the players if the players are having fun. Even if not the ways the DM wanted for the game, I'm not sure. I'm sure I'm not that makes sense, the, but I, video. I, I also um, it's very hard to read these comments, and the longer they are, the yeah. more that like I can't. It's harder to track. <clears throat> yeah, because I don't know how to increase the font size on this app. <laughs> <laughs> MCDM just wants a system he can pump books out for without having to worry about the OGL. Well, that's part of it. Um, I mean, I I don't blame him for not for uh, not wanting to have to worry about the OGL because that's yeah, it, it's. Stupid, and no one should really have to have to burden themselves with uh, uh, worrying about uh, Watsy coming after them. Right. Uh, so I'm just going to skip down a little bit, uh, see if there's anything that we should really hit on here. I honestly lost a lot of my interest in Questing Beast content once he said he wasn't as interested in the role playing aspects of the game and more so the tactical infinity. Of RPGs. Yeah. Yeah. Questing Beast. 
I've got kind of mixed feelings. He's made some good videos. Like, he's definitely... He's thorough when he's going through stuff. Mm -hmm. But I generally don't find his stuff... Like, he doesn't grab me. Yeah. I did... I backed Nave. Yeah, he's the one uh, who did Nave. I yeah. mean, yeah, he's, he's very much that OSR... Yeah. Uh, mindset where it's about... It's about the tactical experience of... Um, of sort of the, the dungeon delve, uh -huh. right? Um, and the exploration and how you're... The problem-solving aspect mm -hmm. of, of, like, the dungeon... The dungeoneering loop. Uh, right. Which is um, among the least interesting parts to me. Yes. I, unless you, you know, immerse it in a context which, which sort of makes which sense. Which makes and sense. You, you give my character stakes. Every Thursday. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly every Thursday. Mostly every Thursday. Yeah. We were on a good good long, we were. long run for a while, but then travel happened. Holy shit. Got another one. Thank you, the Broken oh, Blade, Thank for you, man. $20. That's Jeez. very generous. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, that's very generous. Thank you so much. I'm the author of Streets of Peril, a Renaissance sword and sorcery oh, TTRG RPG. If you're interested in checking out my new games, I would love to send you guys a free copy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll buy it. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I don't rather... send us a free copy. Send us the link yeah. to where send we can buy it. Send us the link. We'll buy it. Yeah. Because um, we, we want people to get to get their money money's worth. Right. That sounds fucking awesome. I've never seen a sword and sorcery game outside of like uh, a sort of an ancient setting. Yeah. Uh, so having, I don't even know how that would work. Uh, so that sounds really interesting. Something in like the most built up part of the medieval age. Yeah. And doing sword and sorcery, cool as fuck. Yeah. I love I love the Renaissance, and I love sword and sorcery. So yeah. definitely. Uh, so hit us up on Twitter, uh, uh, just at Black Lodge Games, same as the channel name here. Um, send us a message to where we can buy it, and we will. Absolutely. And thank you again for the thank $20. you very much. That's that's huge, man. Thank you. Yeah, that's great to hear. Again, another yeah. someone else make someone who's made something. And I know, is and made something interesting. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Bum, bum, bum. Torchbearer is easier than the burning wheel. Not <laughs> quite playable, but there is one interesting idea. Every time you make a roll, you make a condition. You mark a condition. Yeah. Hungry and thirsty, tired, angry, sick, injured, and I dead. do vaguely remember that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's Here hard we to make a game more complicated than... Burning then wheel. burning wheel, yeah. <laughs> Point blank says, "I agree. We beat them by having our way of playing be more appealing." A hundred percent, absolutely right. This guy gets it. This guy definitely gets it. <laughs> They're no longer called <laughs> yeah, SJWs. Yeah. They I saw now that was that, that hashtag kings. was trending today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I didn't see that. <laughs> of course, I wasn't really on Twitter today very much because work is insane. Yeah. yeah. A hundred percent. You win by making good games. Exactly. Yeah. You make good games. People will play them. And the thing is, you like, you don't need mass market appeal. Either. Yes. You want the thing is the mass market consumer mass, is, yeah. does not decide Care. the direction of anything anyway right. in any other context, and they, you will never reach that person. Um, you'll reach some of them, like a very small minority of them. Right. But the, the person who is, like, obsessed with, like, getting every D&D &D product, like, they're not the people that you want to reach anyway. You know? Right. Like, you want you want to find the highest... Like, a, we are making quality, things... quality, not quantity. Right. Yeah. Like, H.L. Mencken used to say that um, he wrote for what he considered the civilized minority of the country. Yeah. And that is how I think we're kind of approaching things. We yes. are We are trying to find the civilized minority of... Uh, gamers, other men of, and women of culture um, that want to play yeah. good, good games. Let's see here. I've been around for a long time. Uh, like what you like. like what don't you, like yeah. what you don't like. Screw everyone else. You get to have an opinion too. Yeah, but if you're going to throw an opinion out, you can't, like, you can't just say, well, you have to respect it. No, I don't. Right. Right. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Simp Clops talked about the woke stuff in Candela Obscura more than you did. We didn't talk about it at all. Um, yeah. 
we will be talking about it in the video that's about the setting because it's impossible to to escape. Right, because that's it's, where it's all it's all on every is. page. <laughs> yeah, it's right, like, and that's where the the woke stuff is. It's right. hard. It's hard to make. I shouldn't give them ideas, but it's hard to make a, a dice mechanic. No, but I mean they 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 uh, they got rid of insanity as a mechanic, mm -hmm. and they instead they had mental scars. Yeah, mental and trauma. scars. Um, so Which stupid. is so stupid. Here, like, this is another thing. Insanity's real, and right. it's scary. Yeah. That's the point. That's the reason it's been in the genre. Right. Right. It's so dumb. Never apologize to the woke or anybody else. Or anybody else. else. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody thinks they've played medieval fantasy until an actual medieval historian shows up. Yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> God, I hate self-inserts so much. Yeah, we are way behind. <laughs> All right, yeah, we're yeah, not going to get to all this. Yeah, we're just going to skip down a little bit. We're just going to randomly go to a, a, a lower part in the chat. Sorry if we missed some other stuff from you guys. Uh, <coughs> uh, Add diversity in dragons. Enjoying your channel. I'm new. Guys like Colville irritate me mm. with this I hate America and capitalism. Oh, but yeah. But send me money. Yeah. Well, well even not even that. Like... Why are you hating America and capitalism? It's the best. It's I know. I was going to say, we love America yeah. and love capitalism. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are great. Enjoy the channel. Don't sweat the woke beta males uh, that whine. Let them sit down to pee like the babies they are. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We, yeah, we are not. Uh, Good comment, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We get to meet Thraxis. He'll be there in June at nice. North Texas DameCon. GameCon. Oh, my God. I can't yeah. even talk. Oh, we all, we also met a couple people from Twitter. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, from Austin. Um, yeah. Because we put out on Twitter last week that we were going to do a little meetup at, um, what's it called again? Emerald Tavern Emerald Games Tavern and Games. Cafe. Yeah. And we had two people show up. It was pretty, it was it was really cool. We met yeah. uh, one of the original playtesters for uh, Ascendant. Yeah. And, uh, she had no idea was the case. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> happy, co happy coincidence. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, yeah. So and uh, we'll so probably we'll be doing more of that in the new year. Yeah, in the new year, we'll make it like a semi regular thing. Um, and yeah, if you live in Austin, um, and it won't necessarily be at the same location, but we'll right. put it out on Twitter and uh, hopefully we can meet some uh, some cool people. Yeah, as far as the Genesis, if you guys ever go over rules or play it, please let us know your true feelings on it. Uh, as a game slash mechanics, not just the awesome setting. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We absolutely. Will. Well, that, and that is kind of what we're. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we're gonna do. Like, we're not always yeah. gonna separate videos by mechanics and setting. It's just that in the case of Candela Obscura, it was like you have to talk about the mechanics. The mechanics. I mean, like, it was such a big <clears throat> problem that like it needed its own video just to talk about that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's uh, we definitely will. Yeah. No, um, we care. We care about both. Right. And they both have to work. Yeah, for that's the thing. They, the games, like the setting and the mechanics, really do inform each other. And they, they have to be in sync. Mm -hmm. uh, so Absolutely. Mechanics matter. Uh, Mel Brooks said it best. It's good to be the king. <laughs> exactly. True. Uh, 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 uh. And I'm sorry. I know we're skipping a lot of these yeah. things. But we do want to get kind of, at least sort of caught up. Um... Theater of the Mind escapes most woke mafia members since for them, their <laughs> stage is empty. <laughs> True. Nice. Uh, so are the fans of Critical Role actually fans of D&D &D and RPGs or just the dinner theater it really is? I think most of them are just dinner theater. Most of them are just dinner yeah. theater, yeah. yeah. There are definitely some. There's d Yeah, there's some. Absolutely, that, there's, there's yeah. some. Um, but yeah, by and large, it's just um, popcorn people. Yeah. Colville is talking to soy boys who grew up without a father. <laughs> Big true. <laughs> Colville is actually having his uh, materials play tested to make sure it makes sense, as opposed to Candela or Watsi. Uh, at least the 2014 crap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I agree, it will be yeah. play tested. Which Although is... this is it, it, it's complete bullshit that uh, this thing wasn't written before this Kickstarter launched a 2025 release date. Is that like, is insane. It's absolutely fucking absurd. Yeah, it's fucking You're absurd. not designing a, a fucking engine. Like <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. you're not you're, this, you're not engineering like a like You're not working uh, for SpaceX. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what, what the deal is with that, but 
Uh, Colville says they've been playtesting this new game for about two years. Makes me wonder. Yeah, yeah like, how they've been playing? Christ. Yeah, playtesting it for two years, and it's gonna take another two years for this fucking thing to come out. Like, yeah, like <laughs> I don't know. We'll hit you guys up on Twitter. Excellent. Nice. Looking Please forward do. to it. Uh, I wish I learned about Axe 2 sooner. I want to put my uh, money with people that don't hate me. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I well, will say... It's still going to be for sale after the, after the yeah. Kickstarter, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there will be print-on-demand versions as well. Like, he's he's going to have... Even if you want the Kickstarter version, it's going to cost more than the Kickstarter did. Um, but right. he will have, like the for a while, books, the deluxe the, books, yeah. the, Imper- the Imperial Imprint Edition... <clears throat> Um, and then you'll be able to get a print on demand and PDF as well. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm going through the uh, the main rulebook right now for X two, and it's awesome. Uh, it does not disappoint. I'm very 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 excited to run this at my table. Um, oh yeah. I think it's going to be the long term system for for the group that I'm I'm running with right now. Um, uh, but they think SJWs are the civilized minority though. That's true. Everyone thinks they are. But, of course, everyone but us is wrong. Is wrong, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sure more Acts 2 uh, will be available. Yes. Yep. Uh, Mark Miller coined the term cancel pigs, and it caught on <laughs> fast. <laughs> nice. You love to see it. Yeah. Uh, Thraxis says, Mr. Max, that comment... Earned you a follow, Simclops. <laughs> oh yeah, I prefer Soyclops. Soyclops. Yeah, Soyclops. I think is they is both cl- work. It's cleaner. Yeah. yeah, but they do both work, and they're both mm-hmm. accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I'll be waiting to order after they deliver. Uh, Hell yeah. Thing is, you don't have to respect anyone's opinion, but they don't have to give a shit whether you respect it or not. Exactly. True. Yeah. Big true. Uh. Table Runner Crispy in the house. Hey. Go sub Crispy right now. Absolutely. Great channel. BLG is so back. Let's go. Uh, as a reference to that Matt Colville talk and the comment you read, in my opinion, you guys got the juice to make it big enough so when your advice starts to lack, it doesn't matter because you already made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Looks like we got another one. Oh. Another five dollars. Thank you. Thank sir. you so much, Bruce Maximus. Most important question: ah. Vancian casting or roll to cast? I mean, this is. I'm going to defer to Nick on this. Again, it 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 depends on the genre. I'll say roll roll to cast for me. I really don't care for the Vancian magic. Vancian magic is spell slots, and yeah, like, this is the D and D and D spell. Yes, yeah, the. Early D&D magic system. <clears throat> well, even up to... That's why we have... Vec- uh, Vecna is a... Right. Is a play on Vance. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, it, it's too artificial for me. And here's the thing. Like, e- even in D&D, the Vancean magic system does nothing to evoke um, the feel or the vibe of the dying earth. Jack Vance is the dying earth. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, short, short stories. Roll to cast I like much more because the stakes are there. Magic should be dangerous. I'm rolling a magic check, whatever you know, whatever the case, the case may be. Do I make it? Do I not make it? Mm-hmm. Some games there's mishaps. Some games there's there's not. But it makes it more interesting. And, uh, um, you know, the, the mechanics mesh with the immersion of the moment where I'm putting an incredible amount of focus and mm-hmm. bodily and mental strain on the line to weave these... These forces of, of arcane power, the forces yeah. of nature to you know, to make my will manifest on the world. So I like Roll to Cast. I like um, how Mithras does things. I like how BRP RuneQuest uh, does does things where uh, there are magic skills in place. So mm-hmm. that is my answer. Okay. I don't know anything about it, so <laughs> I could not tell you. No, you will when I run RuneQuest. Yeah. Uh, totally agree with Steve there. Uh, the lead time is too long on the game. By the time it's out, no one will care. Yeah, I think that's true. No one is going to care. Yeah, that's a long... It's a long fucking time. Yeah. And, and, uh, but again, only... but, but, but I will say, in defense, he probably will deliver it then. He will, he will whereas deliver you it. Can, you can go and fund something on Kickstarter and it right. will never show up. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. so. So and and so there is that something yeah. up his. I don't know anything, uh, you know, in, enough about it, but like this, that's such a blunder because that is. 
that's a, like an inexcusable like lag time. Yeah, it's, it's in in delivery. Crazy. So I I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's like Whatever. why, why I won't buy it, it anyway. So I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> Axe is an amazing product already. Axe two is going to be yeah. really amazing. I am the first backer. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. No one can take that from him. Yeah. And nor nor should they. Nor should they. No, I I, I agree because I I got Axe first edition and I bought a whole bunch of the other books as well. The PDFs. Be going mm-hmm. through them. Um, I'm gonna be running Sinister Stone of Sakara as the opening of the campaign, um, and yeah. for Axe two, and yeah, it's. It's great so far. Like, it's so well thought out. And just McCreese, man, he gets it. Uh, yeah. And just great dude, too. Really, really yeah. uh, glad we got to talk to him. And we'll get to talk to him again more. Yes. Uh, FYI, McCreese will be on Inappropriate Characters this Sunday. I did oh, see that. Okay. I did not see that. <clears throat> Time to defeat Imperial Japan and Germany about four years. Time to release a TTRPG <laughs> on Kickstarter. The same. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Can we get that minus one Toddzilla? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Godzilla minus one, but I heard it's fucking awesome. I haven't either. I don't care. I, I've I, heard it's like like way more awesome than you would anticipate, though. I just don't care about Godzilla, but I don't know. I could be convinced. Wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's too bad. I really wanted to save Vancey and casting, trying to make it work. Well, you probably can. You you definitely yeah. can. You're talking about you asking our preference, basically. That was that yeah. was Nick's preference. Yeah, I mean, like I would love Vancey and casting if uh, I get you know again if it if it evoked more of what Vance was conveying in the Dying Earth, or if you do something else interesting with it that I haven't seen before. Uh-huh. I'm not. It's not like a deal breaker for me. I like spell slots with a roll, with roll, roll a dice, dice to, to retain, retain the, the slot. slot. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, I have to disagree with what was said earlier about free league games. The One Ring 2E and Forbidden Lands are amazing and stand up to long-term play. So for <clears throat> Forbidden Lands does. Uh, I haven't played the One Ring 2nd Edition. My issue with free league games is most of your skills and your attributes, there's a very limited... There's a there's a there's a, a rapidly approaching ceiling to before you max out different skills and abilities. Yeah. And when that happens, and you, you get you get experience at a pretty rapid clip. It's one mm-hmm. of those games where you sort of did you uh you know, was there a big role play moment? Did you put yourself on the line or something? Did you did you challenge um either ambition or you know, one of these things on, on your, your character sheets? Did you assist a player? Questions like these. And for yeah. every sort of yes, you get an experience point and everybody gets at least one for showing up. Um, in my experience, um, you know, after, you know, seven to ten sessions, um, I'm, I'm really quickly running out of things to spend experience on that actually makes sense with what I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Um you know, because I've, I've either maxed something out, and or maybe I don't want to max anything. Uh, this this skill out, or the skill, uh, uh, to its maximum, because I don't think my character is there yet. But, you know, I gotta spend this, yeah, this 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 stuff. I mean, I guess you, you could sit on it, but um, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's my take on it. That's what I liked about Pathfinder 1E, what my group is currently doing. Some Vancey and some not. It's all good. Yeah. I, I've said it uh, before. I, I love Pathfinder 1st Edition mm-hmm. because it was the first game uh, I played. And nostalgia is absolutely... Very powerful. Is yeah. absolutely a legitimate reason. You just need to be honest that it's nostalgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, you know, and so I will... I, I still have... Um, uh, a lot of my Pathfinder 1E books, I don't intend ever to give them up, even though that type of game isn't an immersive focus. It's a D&D, it's a you know, 3.5 yeah. clone. I still love it. And I love the world for all of its um, baggage. Yeah. Converted over to Roll to Cast with Shadow Dark and love the mechanic way more than Vancey. Ah, interesting. I've not played Shadow Dark yet. Uh, we will review that at some point. Yep. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting the physical book on That's that. That's cool, though. Yeah. 
Uh, some rando, I have Vancian on top of roll to cast. Having prepped spells makes rolling harder, but the prepped spells always go off. Hmm. That's interesting. I like that. You're combining... Um, you're combining both. You can either prepare at the at the start of the day and have them have defined spell slots, which always activate. But if you want to shoot from the hip, as it were, um, mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta roll. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, but won't we be getting packets for MCDM along the way, like with Flea Mortals? Isn't the claim that you'll already be fully playing the game before the PDF even appears on the store? Uh, yeah, no there's, I, I have no th- idea. so yeah, 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 in 2024, they're distributing some sort of, uh, like packet quick that you can start play. or something. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I might be more than a, than a quick, quick start. I'm okay. not sure. Um, so you're probably correct on that and we're probably wrong because we're just not, why would not you, really why would you do that though? I don't fucking know. Like man. just make the fucking book. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I so they know. can charge people more as they I go along. I have no on. idea. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Hey Nick, what rolling system do you think is best for a magic system that is not Vancian, but is more like a fluid power, like pyromancy and some related abilities? So, <clears throat> I, I have to think about this. I mean, my I always go back to Mithras for like what I how uh, for my magic system preferences. Uh, that is a a system. It's a, a D one hundred system. So the straight resolution mechanic is always going to be the same when you when you get right down to it but um the effects and the way in which certain quote unquote magics operate uh mechanically are very different in accordance with with like what the feel of of that is so for example in Mithras you have um Sorcery, which is more wizardly type magic, that has its own um, associated skill with it, which you roll. But the effects of that type of magic, it's not just, um, you know, fireball or the knock spell or the web spell. Um, a lot of, you, you have certain basic base effects. And if I remember correctly, uh, depending on how well you roll or how, mu- how much you want to risk it, um, you can take these base spell effects and sort of warp them. You can magnify certain things. It's like, it's like a, you're being a metamagic wizard, to use D&D terms, where um, you have animism, which is like shamanism. You're still rolling a D100, success, failure, partial success, um, critical success, critical failure on that roll, but you're generally not doing like quote unquote spell effects. You are summoning forth uh, either a trapped spirit and using its abilities to command, or you're trying to summon a spirit that you haven't bound. So, um, yeah, I would, I, I wouldn't, f- from my perspective, I wouldn't focus so much on like the mechanic. Focus on what if you if you have different types of magic or different schools of magic, what is the most evocative things that make the different schools unique, and mm-hmm. then try and tailor that to build the mechanic. Build a mechanic with, around build the mechanic vibe, around around the vibe around the vibe. Yeah. Hopefully that's cogent and helpful. Uh, they'll have full MCDM RPG PDFs next year. People will be playing it next year. The print books won't be out until 2025. Okay. That makes more sense. If okay. So, it's, so it'll be kind of like Axe then, I'm assuming, where it's you're going to have something that's not going to be fully laid out necessarily, okay. but you'll get the content of the game. I mean, that's that's much more reasonable. That's much more reasonable. Much more reasonable. Yeah. The way he was talking about it, it was like, like COVID was talking about it, like, oh, we didn't even write this at all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I had an idea. You want to kickstart? Like, out for... Uh, a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at Colville. I'm at Colville. I, I uh, his facial expressions. I know. Right? They drive me insane. Yeah. Fancy and magic. I've been working on my own game, been running games with the same group in 3.5 and Pathfinder 1. Uh-huh. When I told them I'm switching to roll to cast, I could have sworn they yeah. wanted to kill me. <laughs> I could imagine that being the case. 
Uh, that being said, I really like how DCC handles casting. Yeah, and much of what DC, what of what is interesting in DCC are the different spell mishaps. Each yeah. spell has its own mishap table, which is yeah. Uh, hilarious and awesome. Uh, it just It's a gigantic word count. Colville will deliver quicker than George R. R. Martin. Oh, yeah, Rothfuss. Yeah. So there is that for him, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, certainly uh, George R. R. Martin will never deliver. He'll, yeah. He'll die before anything else comes out. Wandering Mage gave us another uh, plus one for Godzilla minus one. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be an amazing movie. Human story. Um, Jay really liked it. Uh, okay. He's got very, very good taste. See, I was always more a fan of, uh, is it Rodan, Rodan? Rodan, yeah. Rodan. The, the, yeah. I always like Rodan. Yeah. DCC spell, ca- oh wait, I gotta actually read this. Uh, Primeval Fantasy says spell point systems are greater than Vancian. I don't know what that is. It's like mana points, you use, this spell costs oh, yeah, 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 one yeah. point, this spell yeah. costs two points. DCC spell casting is fun. <laughs> Though the tables for each spell can be daunting for new players, but overall, I yeah. like it. I also like the vibe. Like, if you're doing a wizard, you also have to be flipping through. It's like your uh, spell yeah. uh, spell books you have to roll on the yeah. uh, on the mishap table. It's, it's kind of cool. I yeah. like it. Uh, DCC is awesome, but they're changing, uh, changing, they're changing to, sweep to sweep up, up. 5e woke refugees. Oh, that's unfortunate. Unfortunate. I have, oh, I have not pay, played a lot of DCC, but I did, yeah. I did back the full... The full shebang for the dying, the dying earth, earth. Yeah. thing, and it, uh, it's really cool. And I would love to, I would love to run it. DCC is the most fun I had playing a magic user. Yeah, <laughs> gotta go. But thanks for the stream and thanks for the chat, uh, people for a company. Have a good one. Thank you, man. Take care, man. Yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, we'll see you again. Yes. The tables are a little much, but I love the whole fail check lose ability to cast that for for a day system. It's great. Adds a lot of drama to the spell roll. Yep. All right, let's see here. Uh, my friend runs Axe, and we both bought their second edition. Mm. I do think that the race... I do think the race are king of eh. Or the race are kind of... Races are races kind, are of, kind of eh. Okay. Uh, but uh, would personally... Homered races... Preferred races to be more alien from each other in appearance and culture. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like... I also agree. Yeah. yeah. Other species should be Should alien. be really alien. They are, yeah. by their definition, inhuman. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, looks like we got another super chat. Oh. You guys are being generous. Very generous. Techno Wolf, thank you. That's a based name. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> For $10. Uh, what's your opinion on dice pool systems like Cortex Prime? I've recently been converting dead, ga- uh, dead games, Men in Black, uh, Deadlands... Deadlands Conspiracy X to Cortex, and it's been a blast for my groups. Huh. Um, I'm not familiar with Cortex. The dice pool games that I am familiar with are Candela Obscura, yeah. funny enough, <laughs> um, and the White Wolf games, um, which we have played. I've played a lot. Yeah. Um, I like dice pools. It's it's I even just from a perspective of being a player, like having a shitload of dice in your hands feels yeah. awesome. And, and and it feels like you're going to be accomplishing more. Uh-huh. I think the unfortunate thing with the, the World of Darkness uh, mm-hmm. dice pools is that they don't actually simulate what they are saying they are. Yeah. Because if you have, yeah. like, you know, five dots in something, it's supposed to be the peak, the peak of, human, of human existence. Yeah. But you will still roll, like, one, two successes sometimes. Yeah. Like, it's so... Um, so dice pools are cool. I like them a lot. I like them a lot as well. Um that's just not a great example of one that's that's yeah. a great implementation. So I don't know what uh, Cortex Prime is. I'm not I've I've heard the name. I'm not familiar with it either. Um I'm not familiar with I I've, I've heard of Deadlands, mm-hmm. uh, but uh I'm not familiar with actually any of these games, which is great cuz uh, uh it's rare for me to not have uh, heard, heard of something. So right. I, I like that. Um yeah, yeah we'll I like I like out. dice pool systems as well. Like, like you said, I think, and, and I'm the last person to turn to with like statistics in, yeah. advice. I don't know shit about uh, the mathematics, but uh, yeah, try to do do your we, best. We are to, math cells. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To make to make the dice dice pool indicative of the level of proficiency you're trying right. to emulate, um, and also like I've heard Shadowrun, you can run like you could roll like. Uh, 
15, 20 dice. That's yeah. too much. When you when exalted, I'm having to, exalted, you can roll like twenty. Yeah, plus. like yeah. Or now now this is like taking up my role play time. Yeah, like yeah. So counting all those d tens as yeah. well, and like finding the successes. Is, oh god. Oh god. Yeah. Uh, but, thank you, man, for yeah, the yeah. Thank super you, thank chat. you so much for the super chat. Yeah. And for the uh, new system that we're gonna have to <laughs> hunt down. Yes. <laughs> Uh, DCC casting I think Steve's system. played uh, Cortex Prime. Steve Fillmore. Okay. We'll have to ask him his yes. opinion then. Boom, 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 boom. Something Colville has always been very clear on that. So they're talking about Colville again. Uh-huh. What's Crafty say? Which is bullshit. That means that I don't actually know if I'm backing a viable product. The playtesting should have been done before going to Kickstarter. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the game should have been much further along. Um, yeah, and just like you should, you should have fully written it. I don't. I, there's no excuse to not write your Ooh. product. Somebody's getting snopsed by uh, Crafty here. Black Lodge Games know the <laughs> PDF won't be available until 2025. Yikes! Oof, that is not great. All right, so we re- we recant what we've said. Yeah. Uh. If Colville, Colville writes one page a day, he'll have a Morkborg by the end of the month. <laughs> nice. Uh, Kickstarter should be for finalizing the product, hiring artists, and paying for printing costs. Yes, 100%. Not for free testing and development of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, you're not building, like, yeah, yeah this isn't a, 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 an engineering uh, project. You're not building... A physical product or a mechanical yeah. system here. Uh, it's a it's a creative product. Right. Write the thing. The Colville Simps have entered the chat. Did you shill down five hundred dollars <laughs> for a vanity box you'll get in twenty twenty six? Five hundred dollars. Ouch. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I tuned in right in time. Was just going to ask what you think of World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness. Well. Oh man, we got so much to say about World of yes. Darkness. Uh, this our, you, you must be new. We yeah, have, you you must be so new. Welcome. Here. Yeah, welcome. And, uh, uh, we love. We've got a bunch of Chronicles of Darkness books up here, yeah. as well as right behind me is Vampire Five E. Yeah. Uh, well, let's, well, so the next the next video is going to be um, about about Vampire Fifth Edition. Yeah. Um, That'll be Nick taking the lead on that one, and uh, it, that is also. The vampire. It's gonna be a series, like a forever yes. series, a forever basically. Because uh, going because there's all so in, much all advice good is stuff. Dog shit it's on- all dog shit. Oh my god! All the content on World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness is so bad on so YouTube. Bad. So fucking bad. Yeah. So there will be a ton of that over time. Um, yes. Here, I love both Old World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness. Same. I prefer Chronicles of Darkness though. Um, I think it was. Uh, just absolutely evaluated improperly by everyone. Yeah. They they hated it because it wasn't old. It wasn't, the darkest, it wasn't the old thing. But it it unshackled my creativity, and by halfway through the first edition of Vampire the Requiem, it yeah. was the superior game. And certainly by Blood and Smoke and second it's edition, so good. it's there's no comparison in my yeah. opinion. It's it's better than it's better than the old world. Better old mechanically world. in many yeah. respects. Better thematically. Yeah. Um, but again, those are things that you're kind of going to be talking about, and we will be talking about a lot on this channel. Right. right. Uh, Cortex is solid, especially the way you can bolt on. Oh, there he is. Uh, oh, what's Steve. Going on, Steve. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, Cortex is solid, especially the way you can bolt on what mechanics matter for your table and eschew the ones that don't. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, uh, uh, Steve and, and some friends of his have been playing this mega long game. Uh-huh. Um, and I think they recently switched over, or like within the past six months or something yeah. like that, had switched over from using, maybe it was 5e, I don't remember what it was before, uh, but to to Cortex Prime. Okay. So it must um, be going well. Oh, we got another super chat. Oh. For $5. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Uh, uh, Liam Shade, is that it? Uh, Liam She. XOD simp here since the 90s. Uh, so World of Darkness nice, and Chronicles, yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Uh, I love what I'm hearing. 
I like World of Darkness settings more, but love Chronicles of Darkness systems, yes. Well, as someone who has been in the game since the 90s, um, uh, I think you're going to have a strong uh, uh, opinion. I think this is uh, the topic of the next video is going to, I think, yeah, uh, it's going to resonate. Something yeah, that you can something you're resonate definitely going to be. Uh, whether you agree in. or disagree. Yeah. But like, um, yeah. Probably, so stay, I think he probably will. If he's been I, gaming, I, I think, I think so. he's going to agree with it. If he's yeah. been gaming with yeah. it since the nineties. Yeah. And the end of that comment. But Changeling: The Lost is incredible. Yeah, Changeling Chang is, is in really awesome. good. Really, really good. Um, thank you so much for the five dollars. Yeah, thank man. you, man. And welcome really and uh, so glad to to have some more World of Darkness and yes. Chronicles fans because we're gonna make a, <laughs> a lot of there, stuff. There, there's so, nothing. Yeah, there's nothing, Still and we're gonna make a lot of it because we love those games yeah. and are gonna that talk Lord, Lord so much by Night about that. Channel them. is like terrible. Which uh, one is that? The one that yeah. I showed you? The, yeah. Yeah. Oh man, we found this. Like channel. the most dry. Yeah. This it's the only person making. Like current content, yeah. Still, the best stuff is the gentleman gamer, and it's not good. It's not and good. It's, and yeah. it's from ten years, ten, twelve, thirteen years ago. Right. Right. So we will definitely be making a lot more of that. Oh yeah. Wait, did we get another one? No, no, no. Okay, it's the same one. Cool. I can't count. <laughs> uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's catch up back here. This is where we left off. Whenever I see dice pool mentioned, I think of Shadowrun first and second edition. Yeah. Like you said. Uh, which I wish I had gotten to play more with that mechanic. Nice. Um, I think Shadowrun I would prefer running in the Cities Without Numbers, uh, which is the, okay. the Crawford book, I think. Yep. Uh, but I'm indifferent to dice pools. It's a cool system, very modular and easy to create mechanics for. It's fun hearing a bunch of dice at the table. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It totally is. Not wrong. <laughs> uh, Shadowrun's big strength was the setting, yes. without a doubt. Their fiction line of books were great as well. Yeah. Uh, I never, I never read them. But I read I, one I read, of them. I picked I read, it up at a game store. I don't remember what it was, but it was not. It was good. One of my brother's friends brought Shadowrun over uh, and loaned it to us for a couple of weeks when I was a kid, and I started reading the. I think it was probably it had to have been second edition because it was early nineties um, or mid, yeah, like early mid nineties, uh, and it was uh, it was it was cool. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Woke of darkness these days. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Hey. <laughs> Promethean, the created video, when? Oh, yeah. well, well, well. That is my favorite yeah. um, Chronicles line um, by far. Uh, zero people are doing... I think Lore by Night also has Promethean videos, yeah. but it's fucking dog shit. They're terrible, yeah. Um, don't, don't know when, but they will... They will be coming. 100% yeah. uh, happen. Uh, Promethean has such a bad rap, which I guess is appropriate given... The disquiet and given that everybody hates yeah. Prometheans in the and world. And everybody hates quality and things that are yeah. interesting and good games. And yeah, People think Promethean yeah. is unplayable. They're wrong. They're wrong. Yeah. yeah. You've run Promethean, right? Yes, I have. Yeah, exactly. I had, I had Fact for check. multiple, year, multiple <laughs> years at, at, at Gen Con, people yeah. who came back to play in my Promethean game. Yeah. And it was awesome. Changing the Lost has an incredible yes, it does. premise for a game. Yes, yes, yes it, does. it does. Can I subscribe twice? Damn. <laughs> uh, you can't, but uh, you can share our channel with other people and share our videos. Yeah. So, and that awesome. would help us out, and we'd love mm -hmm. that. Be curious uh, what you guys think of the rules light RPGs, like Black Sword Hack or Dolmenwood. I'm not familiar with either. I I know I know what Dolman Wood is, but I haven't looked. I've at heard it. of Black Sword Hack. I don't know though. T I haven't heard of Black Sword Hack. I've heard of the Black Hack. G generally, I don't like rules light systems. I don't. Again, I don't want something that's like so cumbersome <clears throat> and overly complex that uh, it gets in the way of the game. But I don't. Uh, I have been converted to the view, the correct view. I think that. A rules light system is only rules light when you first buy it, and then when you start playing it, it becomes a crunchy system over time. Right. Because you have to continuously make new rulings, and those become your rules. So it's just an incomplete game, uh, basically. Yeah, there are some quote unquote rules light uh, games that are thread the needle better than others. Yeah. But I'm I'm generally uh, much more in favor. Uh, uh, a more robust yeah. system. I want a system that is comprehensive enough to emulate the world, but one that I do not have to reference con uh, constantly sort of um, 
with with as sort of every action, every yeah. uh, every scene. Uh, I, I want uh, a system that's robust yet as unobtrusive as is possible. Yeah. World of Darkness has mutated into an unrecognizable mess. I know it's so sad. Yeah. The game is softer, and the people in the community, especially LARP, are the absolute dregs of RPG players. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I we... mean that that's the reason we made the safety tools video, which if yeah. you haven't watched, go and check oh, it yeah, out. Oh yeah, Onyx Path. The reason because is because we watched this Onyx Path video with these dumb broads who were talking about safety tools, um, and they've. I mean, the products that they make now are so fucking bad yeah and these people are awful like they they took exalted this game that i absolutely love they took it and turned this where you got like you know this fucking hot snm nun you know who's <laughs> like a, a fucking badass you got this guy with this giant crab arm and shit like that and they turned that into the the most boring ugly just soulless garbage in third edition yeah uh, and, and it's just it's so frustrating exalted essence we have a video on exalted third editions yeah, going through the art uh yeah, yeah. Uh, on the channel it's so bad it's a crime yeah um, and it's it, it's basically just like a reflection of the values who of the people who are making <clears throat> this right um and so yeah it's been really they're villains they it, are villains. it really is unfortunate it's we, unfortunate we, yeah. we mentioned earlier that the the tabletop hobby is the most um, the most captured. Is the most, is the most captured, and the patient zero within the um, tabletop RPG community is the World of Darkness community. Yeah. That is um, terminally infected. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Uh, Liam Shade, believe it or not, Geist the Sin Eaters was my intro to Call of uh, Chronicles of Darkness. Cool. Loved it. I actually, I never, I, never, I never read Geist. Never I, read it, never yeah. played it. Um, I've never played VTM, and now, from what I hear, it would be really hard to find a tolerable group now. Yes. Yeah. It's now, our, our, one of our subscribers, uh, Buttquack, um, he was invited to play in a vampire game, and he was like, awesome, I've always wanted to play this. Yeah. And they had their safety tools beforehand. In the, mm -hmm. in the lines and veils, they oh, had murder. murder. <laughs> yeah. It, the it's... game's about murder. Like, what the f what is even going on here? You you just you got to be really careful with the players. Most yeah. of these players are are um, demons. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, freaks freaks and demons. Yeah. Um, Have a good night, Primeval Fantasy. Later on, man. Yeah. I always liked the lore of vampire. I liked that '90s Aaron Spelling vampire show. Oh yeah, the uh, the the vampire Kindred the, the Embrace. Kindred the Embrace. Yeah. Uh, I it never, was pretty good. Never seen it. Yeah. It was pretty good. I mean, they got certain things wrong, but it was a decent show. Yeah. Um, and it it got yeah. canceled. <laughs> yeah, Vampire the Masquerade is, is great. And um, I, I, I would say, from my perspective, 5th fifth, fifth edition is still... There's a lot of really, really yeah. good stuff. It's about good, it. yeah. Um, so I, I would not sleep on it. Yeah. Um, it's just like... And it was, you know, made, it was made by... It was made... By people who legitimately Love vampire. loved vampire, yeah. and it is a crime. Um, whatever the creators' uh, personal politics were, it was absolutely um, criminal uh, how they were dragged and yeah. uh, and their their hard work, uh, born out of a legitimate love and passion, uh, yeah. was uh, um, uh, destroyed almost almost completely. So so it's yeah. a, it's amazing that there's that. Uh, I don't care for it, but it's amazing that even Werewolf Fifth Edition came out, Hunter the Reckoning Fifth Edition even yeah. even came out. So, um, yeah, don't 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 sleep on it. I would check yeah. it out. Can't believe people don't see why Promethean is cool. It brings the struggle for meaning and purpose to the forefront. It yeah. is the most. It is the most. Um, <laughs> it is Promethean the created is the most life affirming. Yeah. Um, RPG like. Well, especially Ever. within the world of darkness. Especially within the world of darkness, you know. I mean, it competes with. I, I would say it's even it's even more um, like life affirming than like Wraith is. In oh, certain, way more. Yeah, because I mean, way more. yeah, because the whole objective you you are one of the most powerful, difficult to kill. Um, creatures in the chronicles of darkness lines and yet you the more the thing you want 
desperately more than anything else um, that you will sacrifice everything to be is to be a regular human. a regular yeah. human being. Yeah. With all of their flaws, uh but you with, are but with their with their humanity. Yeah. With their humanity. It's it's such a it's <laughs> it's it's such a positive game that uh yeah, Onyxpeth would be incapable of, of, of yeah. running it. They would burn. Well, and, that, and that's what you said to me a while ago was uh, that it's the the biggest flaw of uh, Promethean Second Edition is that the game designers fundamentally yeah. don't know what it means. They to be don't human. know what it means to be human. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it is about eleven o'clock here. Uh, I do want to thank you guys all for joining us. Uh, I think that's all the comments we're gonna have time for today. Yeah, much sure. obliged for all the all the super yeah, chats. All the Sorry super we didn't chats. get to everything. Thank, but... Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for for showing up. That was yeah, this, this was, was super fun. fun. Yeah. Um, again, like once the holidays are over, this will be back to basically every single Thursday we we yep. stream. The, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming by. Yeah, and thanks, thanks so much. Thank you for all the new subscriptions. Like it's been awesome. It's so yeah, great to big, see new big, new big people. white pill. Yeah, big knowing white that pill. people we're doing yeah. it. <laughs> you know, it's working. Yeah, you know, people are people are vibing with the with the message. It's uh, it's it's resonating with with people. Uh, super uh, awesome to see uh, two people. One one person yeah. working on a game. Someone else who's made a game. Hell yeah! Awesome. Awesome. And stuff. gotcha, crafty. Thank you very much. All right, guys, have a wonderful night. All right, take care, everybody.